a little pre-show here. Hey, if you got this part of the video, got the live unedited edition, or if you're listening on um, Spreaker or iHeartRadio, you've got the unedited edition. And uh, we're you know, a few minutes pre-show, about five minutes. So if you want, if you got this version and you want to skip ahead to the beginning of the show, you can skip five minutes ahead or hang tight. We just like to get out here in the community. If you're joining us for the first time or you caught this somehow else, you, can, you stumbled across it. We are live every Thursday, just about, probably 48 out of 52. Every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, out here at theaverageguy.tv, all one word, theaverageguy.tv, uh, slash forward slash live. And we'd love to have you come out and join us. We're a little bit, like I said, we're in a little bit of pre-show, so hang tight. Mark, let me know Spreaker is up, and it should be refreshable at this point, as well as the video. So hang tight. If you're listening live, we'll, uh, we'll get started here in five minutes or so, maybe a little after the hour. Welcome. Jim, I, I know we won't talk about it in the show, but um, best new charger I got is this Anchor Chi wireless charger. Really? It's a stand. So, right? So, it sits on your desk. You just throw your phone on. It's charging. Yeah. And uh, so, I went, I went all wireless. We can talk about that next week. You take, this but, is this is always the problem for me, right? So, I, I took that off. I know, but I, I need it. I do. Oh, I yeah. That kills car. wireless. But, I've got one of those in my uh, S9 case. I've got so, the same thing. Yeah. In order to put it in the car and mount, best mount I found these magnetic mounts that have kind of a rubber back, but um, it kills the wireless charger. There. Um, so I had the same thing in my car. I loved it. I actually found though a wireless charger for my car that it's like one of those gravity mounts, right? So you just, as you slide it in, the arms close on it, super small. Cool. It has wireless charging built in. So I just slide it, it's charging. Mm -hmm. So I don't need the plate anymore, um, especially because I got these stands. So when I'm, even when I'm at work, I have one at work and one at home. So now I've gone, I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see how it goes. I always, I can go back to, I left the sticky thing on my car so I could go back to magnet if I want. But uh, yeah, it's working really, really well. What's the name of the mount? So I put it in the show notes. Oh. It was, it was the one I was going to talk about. So if you go down yeah. to four car. Mm. Now, the one thing I need to get for the car is it has what it comes with. So it, oh. uh, what car charger has a, vent mount but you can replace that with a sticky mount so you can just stick it if you're wanting so i'm gonna replace my magnet one with a sticky one because you know the vent ones aren't my favorite for a number of reasons uh -huh. so i'm using it now just to see if it works All and right. it does so i think i'm gonna grab the other um, adapter for it which is like four bucks or something like that yeah works really really well the way that that just slides right in there so yeah I'm, i've been a fan and it, it opened up my wireless charging because i also this is the first time i've seen this i should have grabbed it I have a power bank now that's just like a regular power bank, but it, you just set your phone on top of it and it's wireless charging. So you don't have to carry on a cord and the power bank. You just carry the power bank and then you just set your phone on top of it and, uh, and you're Oops. charging. Okay. Hold on. I was going to show the, uh, let's, that's not the right. Let's go to the application and we'll show that. So that it's that. Like Thursday night football. It's the, yeah, it's coming up. It's too bad. I podcast it's happening. Thursday. So um, go back to the. Oh, I'll I'll just lock in on you. Sorry, that's my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no big deal. Okay. So this is what you got, right? This. Yeah, and there's a few of them, but this one had the best. There's a lot of them that have really bad reviews. So this one, I got it. It works pretty well, and like it shows on. Go down to like the. Uh, go down that. Yeah. So you can get. See how it has a ball. Oh, mount? you can do the mounts. Different types yeah, of mounts. You could get a, a sticky mount or a vent. It comes with the vent mount. I just need to get the sticky mount. So when you when that thing hits the bottom. That's yep. the pressure point that pushes down and pulls the arms in. Yep, exactly. Oh, so it fits cool. a lot of different sizes. Um, they do say to, you know, it's so check wireless charging before you buy to make sure your case is not too thick. I have the Apple leather case and it works perfectly, um, obviously, because it's from Apple and they want to make sure it works. But yeah. people with otter boxes, especially, are having trouble with it Very going thick. Like on and yep. off, on and off, on and off, and it's not a good connection. But, uh, but yeah, and then when you get these Anchor ones, so I love Anchor products. They're my favorite for power. They have two different models of this, so check which one you want. This one is 29, I believe, and they have another one for 19. And uh, this one can do up to the fast charging for like the, I think the Galaxy phones have like 10 watt uh, or 10, 10 watt, is that right? Or set amps, no, watts. And then there's another, this goes down to like five, 7.5 and 10. The cheaper version only goes up to, I think five. Um, so I got the faster one just in case. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah. I've been, uh, I'm pretty impressed with the wireless charging. I had never used it. I've had this 10 for a long time and I've never used wireless charging because of the same reason you guys just said I had the plate. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Well, I've been dying to get away from it. What's the, is a cable coming? So for, for power then, it just has a cable that's USB. Yeah, a black cable, yep, that's USB. Down. So so I actually probably, have a four probably port. Probably micro, right? Uh, it is micro, correct. Yeah. So I have a four port anchor car charger because I run my dash cam. I have a, my car doesn't have Bluetooth, so I have to get a little Bluetooth adapter to plug into my aux and the wireless charger. All three of those running off my four port USB car charger and it runs fine. Powers all those. Uh, yeah, fine. so Mark Robinson said he likes a Scotia mag mount. And that's exactly what I used before. I, Jim, I think that's one you use. I have the Scotia. Hannah, my wife, I set it up with her car. She has the Scotia one. Those were great. They yeah. just didn't offer. I don't think Scotia offered a car, a wireless car charger one yet. They're still relatively new. What I was waiting for and what I tried to search for was a wireless car charging mount that also has the Bluetooth built in, right? Because a lot of people I still think are like me and don't have Bluetooth in their car. Yeah. Even my wife's Traverse, you had to get the LTZ version to get Bluetooth that connected to your car. We just had the LT. It's a 2016 car, I think, and it doesn't have Bluetooth. So sh um, you can plug a cord into that one. But yeah, so I mean, I think if you could find a mount that did charging and the Bluetooth at the same time, that would be dynamite because that would eliminate one of my devices. Yeah. My dashboard kind of looks like a dashboard from like a ghetto, like, you know, like back when like the tape things were big and you have the tape and the cord running out of the tape. It kind of yeah. looks like that a little yeah. bit now, but Mine works pretty well. Too. At least I don't have to plug the cord in every time. Mine does too. Yeah. And then the, you know, I bought the, um, is it a Logitech? No, it's a Belkin. So I bought the Belkin Bluetooth converter, you know, so Bluetooth goes in and then it's got a little magnet mount, a little round disc that goes on a sticky magnet mount on the car. Exactly. And I that's have. your, that's your microphone. That microphone could not be any worse. Oh, they're, they're, like, they're that way on all of them. I oh agree. Man, or I got to, I got to pick that thing up off the magnet and like hold it like a walkie talkie, you know, I'm like, Hey, what's going on? You know, what are we talking about? I don't about? even use it. I disconnect and I just, or I just on the iPhone, I switch the phone and I hold my phone or, uh, I throw in your Air AirPods or whatever I got to do. Yeah, I just need a new car. Just to be honest, <laughs> it's time to get a new car. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I got to hold out. Hannah's got the new car. I got to make this Jeep mm -hmm. last as long as possible. We're waiting for to pay off her Subaru. So we're, I know we're about 18 That's, months out. We were and then as soon as that gets paid off, Sammy gets my car and we're going to buy it. I'm going to buy a new one for me. I'm looking at those Tacomas. The really? TRD Pro. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty sweet. Those little trucks are, the mid-sized trucks are kind of nice. I think we're going to stay Subaru. Okay. Yeah. We really like them. The eyesight stuff on those is incredible. Like the safety, you know, the, That's it's what got I've heard the cameras. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. They, they might be the leader right now. So I wonder where everybody's at. This is kind of weird. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Watching football. Must, nah. Yeah. No, not this group. Maybe not that crowd. This yeah. is kind of weird. I'm watching uh, football. <laughs> um, are you? <laughs> you yeah. Who's who's on? Patriots and uh, uh, Colts. Colts and okay. Patriots in New England. It's on Prime, right? Oh, yeah. it is. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's streaming on Prime with the NFL commentary. But uh, when they take over from NFL Network or Fox, uh, Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm are going to be the game by game, play by play and color really? announcer. Really? Yeah. yeah, I'm looking for. I, I tuned in tonight. I brought it up online because I wanted to hear him, but it actually doesn't start until they pick up from. Because Fox won't take it all year. Right. Mark says replace the radio with one that supports Bluetooth. Cheap and easy. Not a oh, neither that's... for my car. No, not. <laughs> I was going to say there are some cars it's not easy to no. swap stuff out. Neither for my car. No. So, okay. Let's, uh, let us, let's crank into this thing. Let me get this up here. And uh, Rich will we'll do, Mark, Mike and I will do our stuff and then we'll. Yep, yep. Do you think? We'll, we'll I'm here. To you. We'll come to you. Um, okay. Let me, Mark, I'm not going to debate this in chat while we're, while we're doing this. So just hang, hang tight on that one. I'm not changing my radio on the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. All right. Let me get this over here. All right. Here we go. This is the Average Guy Network and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 373 recorded on October 4th, 2018. Here at Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios here. Mike, uh, I, the weirdest weather this week, uh, Wednesday, 92, Wednesday or Thursday morning, 42. Something like 50-degree swing overnight. 
Say it again. It, it was in the thirties this morning. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was, it was Tuesday was same thing, right? Like 50s, 60s, like you said, Wednesday, 92. I think it even got up to like 95 and then right back down to the thirties the next morning. It was Just crazy. Bizarre. And it's yeah. the one day. It's not like we've had a trend of this, right? We just had a yeah. one weird peak. Cause now it's kind of back in the 50s, 60s as our, well, as our new average. Uh, fall is here. Rain is on its way. Rainy weekend here in Nebraska. But of course, we'll have the, the show notes. You'll want to look at these show notes because there's going to be a lot of links. Rich is going to talk a lot about those. And so head over to theaverageguy.tv if you want to get directly to him. You just go to theaverageguy.tv forward slash HGG373. You can't miss that one. And the show notes will be there as well. Don't forget, you can join us live on our mobile app, of course, sponsored by the Patreon subscribers out there. I want to thank you guys for supporting us in the way that you do that appreciate your monthly subscriptions head over to homegadgetgeeks.com on your phone and then just download the app it's free it's the best way to listen to us on the road really the best way to stream it is right off the app would love to have you do that and then of course don't forget rate review subscribe all those things no matter where you're listening there's probably an option to do that and i can't, nobody ever leaves us uh, leaves that leaves a review i don't know why i even ask but if you're out there, do that. We appreciate it. Big thanks to Mark Robson and Mike Howard last week in the big the big barbecue and grill show. And uh, Mike, I always walk away from those like super hungry. And uh, Mark, some of the stuff Mark is doing right now, absolutely incredible. It's pro level too. I love seeing all his stuff he posts and the, the meat he's cooking. He's, he's a pro. Yeah, no, super good. Uh, guess what I did this week? I went out and looked at grills. That's all I did. I didn't buy one. Couple grills showed up in the Facebook group. If you haven't, uh, yeah. if you haven't been out there yet, this is the time. If in the, if you're in the United States, this is the time to look for those clearance grills. Oh, they are so. clearancing a ton of them. Out. Even Lowe's having a lot of money off, hundred and fifty dollars off these grills. I went and grabbed a little tailgate grill, propane one, but all the other ones, it was hard not to buy a new big gas grill because they had mm -hmm. great deals on those. I think Kyle found a uh, acorn yeah. at Walmart for like 150 bucks. Yeah. And so you might want to, if you're in the U.S. and you're in the grill space, even if you're not, you should own a grill. Get out there and look for those grills on clearance. Big box stores, Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, uh, any of those, Menards, all almost all of them, even Target. I was at a Target and they were clearancing their grills. So get out there. If you haven't got your grill, get out there and get it done. One more reminder, if you want to join me on Fitbit, and every week we get a couple more to join me out there, if you want to join me on Fitbit, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. I'll include you in our weekly hustles is what they're called. Sometimes there's a weekend hustle. And if you want to jump in on that, uh, let, let me know, jim at theaverageguy.tv. We will throw you in. Like always, we will have crypto in the post show. Big, big breaking news, not really, but uh, breaking news on crypto. We'll do that. Well, okay. Big Microsoft and Windows show tonight. It's the one I always look forward to. Once in the spring, once in the fall. Thank God that Microsoft's on a regular schedule because we get rich here <laughs> twice a year. Rich, welcome. How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Yeah, good they're, they're regular clockwork, aren't they, with their announcements? Well, now we know. Semi-annually, we're going to get a new build of Windows 10 no matter what, it seems. And then this, we just had a bonus this week with the October event that I just got home from yesterday from New York City. Yeah, why um, do they just want to separate? I mean, they just had had Ignite, right? And they could have done yeah, some hardware this, it, now. Yeah, right? it, it's just not the scene. It's not the place. In fact, what was funny about Ignite was the week before Ignite, they made several enterprise and business-related announcements, which I, I scratch my head and going, well, why would they do that before the stage at Ignite? But once you get to Ignite and you hear the Vision keynote, they did very good at keeping that on pace. And then they had follow-up technical keynotes. So making those announcements early was the right way to go for ignite but this stuff they wanted it in its own venue yeah well we're going to talk a little bit you were there so we're going to talk I a little will. bit about the new hardware announcements first yeah, we'll both come, of them we'll come back around a little bit to some of the productivity announcements they've made we'll come back and talk about the october update which is available right now yep. so if you for want to seekers it, yeah if you want to do that, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we've got some miscellaneous stuff to talk about going forward. But Rich, let's let's uh, jump right in on the hardware side. We saw a new Surface Pro 6, which doesn't make any sense. We thought the names were going to go away. Yeah, we thought the they dropped the number thing, right? How much do you think Microsoft wants to go back and rename that Surface Pro in 2017 to Surface Pro 5? <laughs> Crazy. I think so. Oh, it's just it's insane what the, uh, we, you know, the naming of these things oftentimes. Yeah. A new laptop, a new studio, and then some new headphones we'll, we'll the talk headphones about that, that was the big surprise yeah, yeah why don't you but, talk about that you saw those that's that's the biggest like nobody saw headphones coming yeah no everything else basically leaked right there was the guy from taiwan with the unboxing video 
which, oh, by the way, I learned that Microsoft is looking into that, oh, by the way, yeah. to figure out how he got that, uh, because it was a Surface Pro 6 in the box. Uh, he didn't have a black one. He had a platinum one. But um, so so that leaked. We saw the leaks about Surface Laptop. We saw the black color, right? So so a lot of the details around the, the new devices leaked. The headphones was the big shocker uh, because nothing had leaked. And now, in the last, they've been building them for three years. And apparently at some point, Mary Jo Foley had heard a rumor about uh, some type of a headset, earphones, headphones, whatever you want to call it. But it kind of died out real quick and never came to fruition. So when when Panos walked out for that one last thing kind of thing, very apple it was. Um, and he walked out and we saw the headphone. And the first thing you see on the headphone is the guy's side profile of his head. And there's the headphones, Surface headphones. In fact, Peter Bright had the best headline of the, the day. And his was Surface apostrophe phones, which everybody wants their Surface phone, right? Mm -hmm. There was even that speculation before this yeah. event. But yeah. it was a great headline. But they are nice. I put them on in the showcase. They had a showcase set up right behind us where we took where we heard the keynote. And I'm standing in front of Dan Rubino from Windows Central, right? The room is noisy. There's probably 70 people in there, right? In this very compact space. Very loud, very noisy, ambient noise conversations. I put those things on at their full setting. They have an adjustable uh, can on them to adjust the noise level on one side and the volume on the other. And I put it on at full. And Dan Rubino, who was talking to someone right next to me, I could not hear a word coming out of his mouth. His lips were still moving. The music was coming in beautifully clear over Bluetooth from a surface that was sitting there. Uh, beautiful device, really nice light gray color. Color concerns me a little bit because of how does it handle dirtiness, right? But um, got, a, got a really nice silver Microsoft logo here on the side right above the cans and comfortable. It, it I read Lance Ulanoff, uh, who used to work at Mashable, is writing his own stuff on Medium now. He talked to Ralph Groin, who's the kind of lead designer for a surface and they built it with where glassware is in mind for comfort because that usually is a pressure point for people yeah. and now i only had them on me. for a few minutes when i have it my boat when i have my bows on for buds yeah they push in a little bit but you just you can't get the you can't get the noise canceling on earbuds like you do on no in fact and it, so much i travel with these so i wear these on the airplane but and they're not noise canceling but they're really good akg head but earbuds that came with my galaxy but um, so beautiful headset, very comfortable. I only had it on for a short time. Um, I'm really looking forward to when these get in the hands of some audio files, some folks who understand that technology and maybe compare it to Bose and Sony's headphones that are priced in that same range. Three forty nine is what they're going to retail for. No word on when they will retail. They save for the holidays. So UK, US. Well, that would be the, the perfect time for them to bring these oh, yeah. to market is for the holidays. And Cortana. Cortana is included in them. And so you actually activate Cortana with some hand motions. And, and it's so voice activated as well. Cortana linked to your phone or nope. Cortana, Cortana actually... in the headphones. Okay. And then so just she, to control the service. Yes, so okay. It's just like having a dot, right? Or, or or something like that. You basically got Cortana in the headset that interacts via the Bluetooth connection or the audio connection. Uh, and it's got, I forget the number of mics that it has and far field mics, but you can actually use voice control as well. Yeah. I think they say eight microphones in total. Yeah. A total of eight. There you go. Four mm -hmm. and four. So four for noise canceling, four for far field for picking yeah. up voice. Um, you know, what's interesting is the question of why now. Okay. So all the other hardware makes sense. And I don't think we'll spend yeah, a ton of time. It was time. It was Updated time to get chips, it. Right. New laptop. Uh, quad core. No. So that's a big deal, right? First time that form factor of Surface Pro has had a quad core chip in it yeah. of any company. Yeah. Um, minimum eight gig of RAM now in all these new devices. That's that that's the low end. Although I think with the Surface Studio 16, it's the low end. But so for laptop two and Surface Pro six, both a minimum eight gig. Uh, and I ran through and priced out some of the, the costs there. But the, the big deal there for those two devices is the quad core, eighth gen too. They, they are not using an older seventh gen. They did use seventh gen quad core in the Surface Studio. But the big upgrade to Surface Studio, they pulled out that hybrid spinning disk and put in solid state drives. And I've know a lot of people who once warranty wore out on their studio upgraded to SSD. They were doing that anyways. Yeah. 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 And it's still a mobile processor, so nothing visibly changed to the form factor of Surface Studio. And the same thing for Laptop and Pro 6, right? Same size and all that, except for Pro 6, you get the color option now. And they, they've done a really good, you know, the black is not available in all configurations, first off. So people should go to the website, go to the links, 
and check out the pre-order page. You can actually pre-order now Pro 6 and Surface Laptop 2. They are available as of 16 October. So next in two weeks, right, 12 days, they're going to be available for shipping and pickup. Uh, Surface Studio, on the other hand, also open for pre-order, but November 15th is the availability on that. So it's it, 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 like I said, I think the smartest upgrade across the board was getting the quad core chips in there, but that solid state drive in the Surface Studio. Yeah, and That's I think it's, I looked at the pricing very similar. You know, it's these are all refresh, right? The, You're right. So Pro 6 is actually cheaper than last year's or 2017 Surface Pro. But all not right? by much. Now, not by much. $100 in one configuration, $400 in another. Surface Laptop par with the first Surface Laptop price-wise. As far as the studio goes, yeah, it's still up there. Yeah. Studio has no, got some serious uh, high-end. Uh, I, I wrote the numbers down. Let me... Studio has basically three configurations, right? You got a high-end Core i7 quad-core. 32 gig of RAM, two, pair, two terabyte solid state drive, $4,800. In the middle, you've got the same thing with the one terabyte drive, $600 less, $4,200. And then on the low end, still a Core i7, still quad core 7 gen, 16 gig of RAM and a one terabyte is $3,499. So that's a steep purchase right there. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a specialized device. Right? It's a very specialized. And the screen, they made a lawnmower. major, That's major upgrade <laughs> to the screen, apparently. Uh, I mean, it really was sharp looking. Yeah, no, doesn't surprise me. None of the hardware announcements surprised me. I think no. we saw refreshes for everything. It's awesome that they're continuing. Yeah, yeah. We're not, we didn't see a product line drop. You know, we're, no, we're, we're no, kinda, in fact. Yeah. yeah so, point. so cool. One of the interesting things, though, back to the headphones. So, I've been, I've listened to a few other podcasts talk about this, uh -huh. and everybody's kind of like, why? You know, all of yeah, a why sudden, headphones? And I, I haven't, I have, I think I know why, okay. but Rich, you were there. How did they spin this? And they like, didn't, that I'm aware of, they didn't spin it any certain way. I certainly didn't talk to anybody or I haven't read anything that has a certain spin on it. But I'll say this, Microsoft has a very long history of building hardware and accessories, right? Peripherals. And headphones are very much a peripheral in a lot of ways to a computer setup or things like that. Uh, but it, it's also one of those items that, it, you know, if you're a business traveler, if you're a regular traveler, you've got noise canceling headphones. So it's it, there's certainly a market. Now, I think it's a tight do I think it's as tough to break into this market as I do Windows Phone breaking into iOS and Android? No, I think that's going to be a little bit easier for them to gain some market share. They already know Surface sells well. The 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 enthusiast and and high end folks are going to want to pair up their Surfaces with a set of Surface headphones. So there's already a market target market out there. Um, but no, I mean they just spun them as you know they talked about them as this high end quality piece of audio gear, and that's why I say I'm really excited to look forward to folks doing that comparison, using the right tools, right, to compare these against like Bose and Sony in that level, and see how they come out. Mike, probably not in your office, but but I'm noticing as I make my way around offices these days, everybody's moving to this open concept, right? And developers, when I when I go into these offices, they all have headphones on, and it's it's really really interesting. And I don't know, Mike. Let me let me hear you. Do you guys in in the work that you're doing or you're seeing in your office? It may be a little bit different where you work, but are you seeing more people wear uh, headphones during the day as they're working? Um, a few, right? In the departments where they don't have to talk to too many people throughout yeah. the day, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, because of that open concept, we you know. We have offices around the outside yep. for all of the yep. managers and above and stuff like that. Yeah. For everyone else in the middle, uh, there's still a lot of talking that needs to be done throughout the day. Right and on. I know that at least the way our cubicles are set up, I can't see the right. people who are talking to me. So I can't, if I'm wearing headphones, I can't know if the attorney next to me is like, hey, Mike, you know, I won't yeah. be able to hear that. So I would say for the majority, no. Um, I do see some wearing headphones throughout the day. And sometimes if you're really trying to just crank something out, you know, you can put them in. But no, yeah. for the most part, not in our. You're business. not in a software development shop. So yeah, if, right. uh, yeah, whenever no, I go in, the software guys have got them on. And what's really interesting, you know, we think of, I think oftentimes we thought of these over the ear, you know, over the ear went away for a long time. And then Beats kind of brought them back and everybody was wearing them like walking around. I saw people wearing them while they were working out. And I was like, that's kind of stupid. That was just my personal opinion, by the way. It may not be stupid, but I am seeing this more and more. So it's interesting. Like I never would have put two and two together and with a Microsoft branded 
set of over the ear noise canceling. By the way, control you can't do this on the Bose. You have to go into the app if you want to if you want to change. Oh, is that this. right? I didn't know that. But you can't. You know, you you for them. I could be talking to somebody. Somebody comes over to my cube, and I just can immediately turn that noise canceling off and turn the volume down. Now you look like a little bit, you look a little bit like uh, princess Leia. When uh, you're you doing just it. <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> uh, when you're doing it that way. But it, it is like all of a sudden I thought, Holy cow, this may be genius in the sense that again, at 350 rich, this is not a, this is not a mainstream media market. No, no, this not is, at all. They not are all. definitely targeting software developers who are using Visual Studio, who are Microsoft centric, who are already wearing headphones at work sure. and may may have used a pair of bows, yeah. may not. All of a sudden now they're kind of like, hey, wait a minute. Like I might drop 350 on a pair of headphones that in the office give me some cred. And so so you did know. you see a tweet today that made you think of this? No, no, I just okay. No. So I just pulled it up on Twitter. There's a guy named uh, and I don't know what his first name is for sure because he doesn't put it in his handle, but he goes by M3 Sweat, which is S-W-E-A-T-T. And this morning he tweeted, the announcement of the new, of the new group of Microsoft Surface devices can't come soon enough. Surface headphones are a step towards a door in an open office floor plan world. Bingo, yeah, right there yeah, what you just yeah. said. Yeah, we, because it's that kind of, it, it introduces that opportunity, like you said, and you can easily come in and out of the noise cancel aspect. We had, go ahead, Mike. Well, okay, but I, the only thing is, if someone walks up to my desk, even if you turn that off, you're still going to pop one off to show them that you're listening to them. To right? show you're them that you're listening. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I don't think point. that, you know, you're otherwise you're like talking to them, like, are you even listening? That's one reason the AirPods honestly have been great for me. They're the one set of headphones I do use in the office because as soon as you pull it out, it pauses, right? Pull oh, it out, it pauses. The, these, okay. you take them off and they pause. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, so that kind of thing is Yeah, great. these do the same thing, by the way. The, That's really take cool. them off your head in the music pause. Because I've never, I haven't seen those in an over the ear yet. Maybe it's right. out there. I just haven't right. tried them. But the earbuds, that's why I like them. Uh, but you're right with the noise canceling and be able to turn that down. You know, I think I think that's nice because you, for most other ones, you it's either on or it's off, right? And some right. scenarios, if I'm driving, for example, I want to turn that down a little bit. I I do want a little bit, but I want to still be able to hear around me. That setting alone would be fantastic. That's one thing I miss on the Bose. You know, you think especially on an airplane is where I'm thinking actually I would use that. Because an announcement comes on, I turn the noise canceling off. I don't necessarily need to turn my volume down or anything like that and turn it back on or, you know, relative to what you're doing. You the Bose always... requires you to change that in the app though, right? Um, well, I have the, so you I have just have no the... on-ear controls. Mine, Bose? my old ones do not. I'm sure they yeah. do now. Well, I, um, I think I just saw a commercial in the last 24 hours that showed somebody, it was Alexa integrated, so they could hit a button on the side and say Alexa, whatever, Alexa yeah, play. Yeah. You can, so you, maybe it's. Uh, no, the Bose are actually Google, not Alexa. Oh, so this must have been mm -hmm. Sony. Who would, would that be Sony? I don't know. But it'd be interesting, though, because whenever I'm talking with noise canceling on, I'm yelling. and I don't even realize it. So I'm sure it just gets a lot louder around the office as they're all, you know, saying that wake word while they're leaving it. Even if you have the slightest noise canceling on, I'm sure they're talking a lot louder. Uh well, it, it's, Mike, aside from that, you know, when we think of, I, I'm not actually thinking you would leave. It's kind of rude to have your headphones on when someone's yeah. trying to talk to you. Yeah. But in an office situation where the office, I know on the Quiet Comfort 35s that I have, and those are pre, I think those are pre the Google uh, Assistant on them, just the version right before. I literally bought them like a month or two later, they announced the newer version that has the Google Voice Assistant on it. Not that I would necessarily use it, but... Um, you could set three different levels. Now they can always upgrade those on the app, but you could go into the app and set three different, you know, noise cancellation profiles that you want to follow. I do like this idea of just having that right on your right there, where you could kind of just click that thing up or down, kind of based on what you want. Volume the same way, right? I don't have to go in there yeah. and kind of monkey with that. Now the bows have the volume on the side, so you can go in there, but those buttons are not that great. Like in their heart, you got to kind of feel where they're at. You know, oh, is this up? Is this down? What am I doing here? You know, so. Are these the perfect podcasting headphones? Oh. Uh, yeah, I think about wireless. the amount of. Yeah, I think they're wireless. I think, you know, obviously not from a mic standpoint, but you have headphones that you can adjust the noise canceling. So you're not, you're not talking like you're drunk. Because sometimes when you have a noise <laughs> canceling, you talk a little bit weird and you hear yourself. But you could set that perfectly. You could have, I, I think they might be a, a fantastic podcasting headphone. Uh, Tony is uh, correcting me. He he says it is 
Alexa in those bows. Yeah, I just I saw that on Amazon site too. The I Series Two QC thirty five. I swore that was ability. a Google Assistant. Doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't doesn't really matter what assistance in there. So I do think uh, when we think about these pairing with developers and that open office concept, I was walking some students through our uh, third floor, which we just redid. Spent a bunch of money on. It's all open concept, and everybody's got headphones on. And I was just like, oh, man, this makes total sense, especially playing Rich, like you said, to the kind of the Microsofties who, you know, the fans who want to have that brand yep. sitting on their head. Yep. And if they're as good as you're saying, certainly for that price, right, they're going to have right. to be they're going to have to be on par better. with Sony and Bose, I think. Yeah, uh, and you'll I have folks that buy for brand. Don't get me wrong. but And they'll they'll go there when they next need their next set of noise canceling if they're using Bose or Sony right now. Right. right. And I don't put Sony in that same category, you don't? by the way. No, I think I, I, up until right now, up until this, it was Bose. That's mm. there. The, yeah, well, they, that I was think, kind of their thing. Yeah. yeah. I think they're the market leader. Everybody else is kind of a distant second on this. I'm not saying Microsoft's all of a sudden going to get market share, but it uh, they've done some dumb hardware things in the past. <laughs> And this actually kind of, you're like, okay, this kind of makes sense. So again, I don't think it'll be a huge, they're going to go sell them out. Although you it, never, you, you never, never know, know, right? Yeah, I, never and know. you just made me think, you know, this is a product unlike Windows Phone, Windows 10 Mobile, 950, whatever you want to call it, that there is not, it, it's just, it. it's the type of a device that somebody who isn't even in the Microsoft ecosystem might just be attracted to because of the feature set. Yeah. Yeah. Because Definitely. of that type of feature set. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at. But, you no, know, no, Windows no. Phone appealed to people in the Windows ecosystem where, uh, you know, iPhone appeals to folks that are in the Mac ecosystem of ice. So this is something that's kind of outside of that. And you know what? Has Apple beyond the, the pods, they haven't built over the year, no, they, have, yet, uh, have they? they have beats. Yeah, beats. Oh, they bought beats. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I, I got to tell you, Jim, the hardware was cool. All right. So we saw a continuation of the line, which was awesome. The, you know, surface line, surface hardware is healthy. Um, but there was some pretty, they did also confirm that day. That's when they announced the release of Windows 10 October 2018 update. Let's talk about that really fast because it's available today. It for is. those seeking, right? Yeah, you wrote, you wrote an article on this, speakers, right? So there's there's a couple ways right now to get the October 2018 update. Uh, you, if you go on your system and it's fully up to date, so you're running 1803 and you've got all your cumulative updates installed and everything's current on the machine, and you hit you go hit check for updates, it, you could feasibly be served up the uh, October 2018 update unless there's a specific block. To your device because of an issue or something like that. Microsoft's using machine learning and AI again for this rollout like they did for the April update. Uh, there's also the media creation tool, which is handy because you can go, it downloads and either gets you an ISO or builds you a USB installation flash drive that you can take around to other machines. And then uh, the update assistant, right? So you can run that right from the web page, downloads a little stub that starts the download and install process. I actually use that to upgrade a 32 gig New Vision Solo 10 draw tablet today. I also successfully upgraded the old uh, HP Stream 7 and Solo Draw 8 or Solo 8 New Vision in place upgrades. No problem with space, even though there are only 32 gig systems. But um, there are a few issues floating around. So be aware of that. There are some reports on Reddit of people losing files in the upgrade process. Um, and there's also some uh, an Intel audio driver compatibility issue that should block. So Microsoft should be blocking that at this point. But so that was cool. But they also showed off some. I actually got called out on the demo stage. I don't know if you saw my tweet about this, mm -hmm. but during the during one of the software demos, I was called out by name because of something I tweeted earlier in the day. So your phone, you guys are familiar with your phone app, right? This is that new app that connects your Android device to your Windows 10 desktop. You can get your last 25 pictures and you can do SMS text messaging using your you know, keyboard and mouse. So your phone, uh, the program manager uh, was demoing your phone and uh, that on the stage and she commented, I had tweeted a picture. So I'm on a JetBlue flight flying from Jacksonville, Florida to New York City. I'm at 37,000 feet. I've got my phone connected to their Wi-Fi. I've got my Surface laptop connected to Wi-Fi. And your phone, they find each other. So I'm accessing your phone at 37,000 feet just because my two devices are on the same Wi-Fi network, which I thought was just the, 
the neatest thing, right? On this airplane full of people. I don't know how many were using Wi-Fi, but you get what I mean, right? They found each other and it worked. I tweeted a picture. They talked about it over breakfast, apparently. The Microsoft <laughs> group before the keynote. And then at the keynote, she called out my name. Uh, and there I am sitting in the back room, a little sheepish and raised my hand and said, yeah, that was me. And we got to talk afterwards. Really cool people building these products. So your phone, pretty cool stuff, right? They, they demoed an unreleased feature of your phone. So imagine this. And it's I'm sorry, Mike, but it's Android because iOS is so restrictive. They can't do the same things with an iOS device as they can with Android. So your phone's really strong. And in fact, Tom Warren today on The Verge wrote about the fact that the real close relationship to Windows 10 is Android because of the abilities it allows them to do. Um, so anyway, so they demoed. So imagine this, your phone app is installed on your Windows 10 device. Your Android phone, you get an alert on an app. Let's call, let's say it, uh, WhatsApp, right? Because So you get an alert on the phone. It pushes to your notification center on Windows 10. You click that notification and a mirror of your Android phone screen pops up on your Windows 10 desktop. It's using the same technology that they are already built and using and proven with Xbox One streaming from your console to the Windows 10 desktop. So that, that connectivity has already existed. It already exists. They've proven that it works well. They're using that same technology, I was told. So now I've got touch, mouse, and keyboard to interact with the WhatsApp app on the Android phone from my Windows 10 desktop hmm. in real time. It was the coolest. It was, it was an unannounced, it's unreleased. They say it's coming. Um, but th I thought that was the coolest thing, right? I did get a demo on iOS, Microsoft Edge of Timeline. So that I dig, they're going to integrate Timeline on iOS devices through the Microsoft Edge browser. Don't know if it has to be the default or not, but that's where that data will be stored at. On Android, however, they just released Microsoft Launcher. I don't know if anybody uses a Android, but Microsoft Launcher is a really good launcher for Android. But that's where Timeline is now available in that beta release that came out Tuesday. So I've got Timeline on my Samsung Galaxy now between my mobile device and my desktop stuff. I can see it on both sides. So it's pretty cool and it's accessible there. I'm trying to think of the other thing they showed us, the launcher. Oh, To Do, Microsoft To Do, right? They had Wonderlist before. Wonderlist has kind of become Microsoft To Do. They released Outlook.com integration with To Do on Tuesday. So you can go to Outlook.com and you can drag emails into To Do and create action items on, for your To Do list. That's going to continue out into the uh, uh, Outlook app on mobile on phones. It's going to continue into the Outlook client on the desktop. So that was pretty cool too. And then the other thing was, yeah, I think that was the key things, the mirroring, the your phone app, the launcher and the to-do stuff. So there are some cool, as well as all the other bits and pieces of mm -hmm. the October 2018 update. Yeah. So if you're listening to this in October or early October of 2018, I re I installed it on every PC I had I last too, night. Yep. So I just went through, did the updates on a faster machine. Of course it's faster. Actually the one behind me is the kangaroo PC right here. It does not have a lot of storage on it and right. it's struggling to get it downloaded. So I'm going to, it took my things. new vision tablets a long time. They're slow. Yeah. They got old, I forget yeah. what kind of processors they have. But. Well, it's not only slow, but I need, I'm going to have to free up. You can see the screen. Uh, there. I'm going to need to free up some space oh, to, gotcha. to get it on there. Everything else, uh, you know, some yeah. of the stuff I downloaded and let them, I just went to bed. I did start till about 945 and then about 1030, the big, the fast machines were done and mm -hmm. everything else was kind of coming back up. But I had some slower machines that I was like, oh, just let them, I'll, I'll get them in the morning. <laughs> you know, I'll get them in the morning. I upgraded Surface Book to setting in the venue after the event was over. Mm. And then I upgraded Surface Laptop that night in a hotel room yeah. in New no, York. Goes fast. I don't, I can't think of too many reasons why you would want to wait. And, and Mike, as we've been doing crypto, I've been really conscious of about twice a month just making sure I'm rebooting the computers as opposed to right. them rebooting on their own. I set up a whole bunch of stuff, you know, crash on re, what's, what's the name of that thing? Crash on restart? No. Crash, no. Restart on crash. That's the name of it um, that I've been using to restart those processes. You know, even if Windows takes it down without my permission, it when it comes back, it'll automatically restart it. But I've been a big, I've just been checking from time to time. Hey, are there updates come in? I didn't exactly know when this update was going to come. Rich, I found it without even looking at the press. I just went to it. and What, this update on Tuesday? Yeah, this, this most recent update. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no. I did get a notification. I got that. Hey, I think, did I? 
Or did I go look? I must have. No, you must have gone looking because they're not pushing any notification. They think they're going to start those push notifications next Tuesday and that when on patch Tuesday, it'll start down. But with the problems that have popped up, I think they might push off. I think they might hold off before they let that start rolling out automatic. Why not? Okay. So this is really them saying, hey, if you're going to search for it, we're going to let you find it. it. They'll probably get some telemetry behind it fix yep. some of the problems that they're having so yep. that when they roll it on patch Tuesday. Yeah. And that's their- exactly how they did in April. Right. So that if certain devices trigger errors, they're going to see that in the telemetry. They're watching for that kind of thing. They're watching social media and Reddit and everything else as well. So that I guarantee they are already set around a desk in Redmond talking about this file issue, the files being deleted. I uh, don't know how widespread that is. They know about the Intel issue. I guess there's still a bug from fast ring build. Um, uh, about CPU percentages in task manager not being accurate. That's still there, apparently. I think that's minor in the scheme of things. Um, but um, I bigger issue is data loss. There, there should never be data loss. And I think I got to imagine that they are trying to figure out what's happening there so they can fix it. Yeah, and yeah, the machine learning AI will trigger, you know, and maybe if there's a certain type of device or a certain piece of soft, they'll flag that. And then people who go looking for it next time will, won't see it. It just simply won't appear in Windows Update. So. There's um some, there's a, a blog post I'll put in the show notes about uh, the Windows 10 October update. What are the Windows Insider's most favorite features that they've just looking on? at that? That's kind of cool. And um and so there's the 15 top features there. If you're kind of wondering like, okay, what what's coming in this? And because they do these every six months now, there's less and less big things yep. coming, and a lot more just kind of small fit and finish things going on. Of course, Edge is still not a separate part, right? It cannot be updated on its own. And so all the edge updates that we get on there, but it's kind of interesting as I read through these October updates, number one, block suspicious behaviors Two, a better notepad, right? There's been some things changed with, uh, with notepad, dark theme and file <laughs> in file explorer, a better way to copy and paste, redesign Microsoft edge menu and settings. That's actually pretty handy. Embedded handwriting options, which is kind of interesting. Improved update experience, maybe not so improved after we've after we're going to make it through here. Well, but they have made it smaller, so there's yeah. a smaller footprint for how much data has to be downloaded. So yeah. that, that I think that's what that's in reference to. Yeah, more accurate typing. If you're using, I think if that's if you're using the on-screen. Uh, uh, um, yes, keypad. and and uh, what's the what do they call that when you use your finger to swipe? Swipe. So that kind of thing is available now on the keyboard on the on the desktop device. It is kind of or caught up with everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Save time with search previews. One-click screenshots control websites that play media automatically, which if you don't, if you hate that in Edge, that's in stopped. Edge, yeah, yeah, it can yeah, now be yeah. controlled site by site. Sync photos to your phone, which, by the way, I think this Android, you know, your phone, I, yeah. it's almost in a preview still. This is almost, it is MVP, very much almost so. MVP, right? I mean, it's still kind of like, hey, we can kind of do this, and here's 25 pictures and maybe some SMS. Yeah. And you do get the message part is labeled as preview. The pictures they're pretty happy with. You do initially the initial image that's downloaded is 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 a little bit better than a thumbnail. So if you share that immediately to social media, probably not going to make a big difference. It's not one you're going to want to grab and print out. Eventually, though, that will sync the full res version down to your desktop. Um, but it, you know, for quick, handy copy paste or drag into a document or something like that off your phone, it, it works really fast. Yeah. Mixed Reality Portal, which uh, Ian has been doing, Ian Dixon. Uh, oh, Ian his... does all kinds of... He was watching me on Twitter Tuesday through his Mixed Reality headset. Yeah, yeah. He said, you're on inside. I'm like, he, wow. He's um, If you're into the Mixed Reality piece, you really want to follow Ian on, on YouTube and subscribe to his channel. He's doing... Yep. Not only does he do quick seven-minute updates whenever we have a new build, He's putting a video out. Uh, he's also talking a lot about uh, mixed reality. It's out there as well. Of course, there's an updated Skype uh, for Windows 10 that's coming, and then 150 new emojis, which none of us here care about. But that's when we think about the top 15 things. So not earth shattering, not you know no. those things. Mike, are you as you hear these things, or are you thinking, "Hey, I'm an update tonight," or what, what? Did you maybe you already kicked off the updates? Yeah, I've already kicked off the <laughs> update, but. It's weird because I kicked off the update and I don't even use these as a desktop, right? All my Windows machines sit in my rack and they run, you know, my SiteHound, my security software and 
sort of stuff like that. So I don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis. The one machine I do use that's Windows 10 on a day-to-day -day basis is my work machine, which I have no control over. Uh, but they do let us use a lot of the cool features. I am kind of happy that our work doesn't lock down a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I've actually gotten really into the Windows ecosystem just with OneNote and things like that ever since I started this new job because it's the one way I can take my personal iPad to work, take it to meetings, and have my... Because I can log into my, my because we all have the Office 365 accounts and it all works. And so that's been a lot of fun. So at work, I'll get to play with it once we once we get the update. But I don't I don't have a desktop that I use that I will run the update on. Yeah. Well, I downloaded mostly Kangaroo still needs to get an update uh, and installed here. Rich, you also went to Ignite. So, I mean, not, I did. not one, but two, but three events uh, of some sort. Give us a little summary. Ignite's really kind of more about the services Microsoft's offering, right? Not a lot of hardware announcements there. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, they um, uh, Ignite is definitely targeted at uh, your IT professionals, your IT managers, your th th leaders in that kind of role. In fact, Mo what Microsoft does it in the summer there is they do Ignite alongside of Envision. And here's how I label Ignite and Envision, right? Ignite is your IT pros. They're the guys in the flip-flop shorts and t-shirts that they got at the last tech conference they were at. And then Envision is your, your well-dressed, business casual type folks that are there to listen to uh, kind of more visionary kind of... Uh, approaches to things, right? They do get some technical stuff and, and, and they're allowed to come over to Ignite sessions. Ignite attendees are not allowed to go over to Envision sessions. So they do, there is a little bit of crossover. And of course, we're all in the same keynote. Um, the, um, so they did, they, you know, it is really focused on services. In fact, they, they released a document that just blew me away uh, because I did get this under embargo in the media briefing, and then I saw it as an under an MVP embargo, but they actually released this. I didn't know they were going to release it, but it's a PDF file, and I put a link in your show notes so you can share it with the readers. But it, they called it the Book of News. There were so many individual announcements made at Ignite that they put together this PDF file. It's got five chapters in it. And it runs from just pulling it up in edge. If, oh, wait a minute, that's the wrong link in there. Uh, there it is, book of news. So what they did was they basically wrote five chapters and in each chapter it is broken down into different areas. So you have security, artificial intelligence and data. Uh, the next thing was Azure and news around that. And then the final one was Microsoft 365. So that message they started last year at Ignite talking about Microsoft 365 when they announced it continued this time. Uh, it is the way forward. It is the reality. They did release um, Office 2019. They did announce that they would have the GA of Windows Server 2019 this month, which they did on Tuesday. And um, so we did hear those kind of things. The one hardware related thing that we heard about, not Azure related, was Hub 2. We actually got a briefing on Surface Hub 2. We got to see a couple of, I would call prototype devices. And the reason I know that is they wouldn't let us take pictures. So we got a full on the record brief. So they showed us the operating system. They, you remember the blog post came out a couple of weeks ago, Surface 2S and Surface 2X, right? So Surface 2S is the first iteration of this new hub to replace Surface Hub 1. And um, if you were watching the keynote, you saw that, that scene where they kind of took the screen in that final demo and rotated it and the image stayed in place. Uh, it's the coolest part of the demo that there was. But, and we got to see, you know, so that's just a neat little feature thing. But here's what they've done. So Surface Hub 2S uh, will be upgradable to Surface Hub 2X in 2020. It's got a modular, um, kind of package, computer package, CPU and everything that just slides in the back on the mount. So the, the monitor hardware, the stand hardware, the uh, USB type C ports on all four sides of the screen, all of that is the same. The big difference between the two will be the, the package of, of chips. So you'll have a faster processor. There'll be a new version of, of uh, Windows 10 called Windows 10 Teams that will be in X. It'll allow multiple users, up to 16 users to log into one hub device share data across their pro their profiles, copy and paste and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Surface Hub 2S, the first iteration is only one user. So there's one screen. So it's kind of like a Windows 10 desktop, right? Only one person can actively be logged in at one time. Yeah, no, a cool, I, and from what I'm understanding is enterprises are very interested. They're in this, psyched about it. Right, they, this they, kind of they've been briefing customers and partners that week. 
when we got brought in on Wednesday afternoon, I think. So they had already been talking to partners uh, for a couple of days. They're excited about it. They want it. It's rollable, right? It's it's movable compared to Surface Hub 1, which was a big, big, huge thing. So, they, yeah, they say they're excited. That's why they're kind of taking this two-pronged approach. And it's not a bad business model, right? If you get people to buy Surface Hub 2S now because they want the, the light and portable aspect of things, you likely have an upgrade coming a year and a half later when Surface 2X comes out. Yeah. So it's not a bad model. Rich, Google today or this week, uh, earlier this week, announces, of course, it's pushing its gaming platform out via the browser, all right, all uh, virtual, pretty much. And they're kind of starting to promise they can push a lot of the gaming game pieces, streaming, yeah. right? out and you can actually do it. Of course, Microsoft has been talking about virtual desktop and getting that to be more like we don't, you know, we don't do the desktop anymore. Had, did, did you, did you make any sessions Any you have any thoughts on where virtual desktops are going? Yeah. You know, the service they announced was for Azure. It's called windows virtual desktop. And what it does is it gives you an option to use either a windows 10 virtual desktop or a windows seven virtual desktop. The, the windows seven piece was kind of in the background. Um, the key about the Windows 7 piece, I'll say, is that, you know, a few weeks ago, they announced the plan for the, the end of service for Windows 7, and they said there will be an extended support plan. You'll pay for that per device per month, and every year the price is going to go up. Well, on the Windows Virtual Desktop with the Windows 7 one, three years of extended support updates at no cost. All you pay is for your compute. So if you're already doing Office 365, or as they put it now, Microsoft 365, then you get three years. If you've got that one system or maybe a handful of systems that still need seven for whatever reason, this could be an avenue for companies to go ahead and migrate all the physical devices and, and use that as their means of staying their line of business app still working with Windows 7, right? Because three years worth of extended support updates is a pretty good deal. And all you're paying for is your compute. So if you're already an Azure customer, it's going to be part of that, that bill. So I thought that was pretty neat and significant. Windows 10 there as well. I saw the native integration. The team demoed for me the native integration. Basically, it just treats that virtual desktop. So if you've got an app on there, whether you're running Windows 7 on there or Windows 10. If you've got an app on that virtual desktop, you can actually pin a shortcut to it on your physical client desktop, either on the start menu or taskbar. And after you first log into that virtual desktop with your right credentials, and oh, by the way, these virtual desktops are multi-user. So more than one person can access that virtual desktop in the Azure from different client desktops, right? Different endpoints. So um, you, you, it actually runs just like an app on your computer. So you click the icon on your taskbar, it makes the connection to the virtual desktop and serves you that kind of like a kiosk mode. It serves you that app through the virtual connection and it's there, it's, it's, you can copy and paste to it so it, you can interact with it within your system as well. I, th I thought it was neat. I, I think it's going to be, I think the bigger story with that is going to be, it's gonna help companies still looking at tough spots in their migration because they need Windows 7 for X, Y, or Z. And this might give, if they're already a customer, it might give them the avenue they need to be able to say, you know what, okay, if we need to run Windows 7 desktop for a little bit longer, let's save some money, Let's make this move. Let's migrate all the physical devices and get done there. And then, you know, that gives them that ability to figure out how they're going to figure out that line of business app and how to make it compatible with Windows 10. I mean, come on. We're less than a year and a half away from the end of life cycle for Windows 10, 7, January 14, 2020. If you're a big business and haven't figured this out yet, you're way behind the ball, way behind the eight ball here. So this is kind of like that, that stick cannon, a stick and carrot. Oh, by the way, it might get you into the Azure ecosystem too, right? So it might be your entry in. I, I think the day is, I, here's my question I ask these desktops, because the thing I couldn't put my head around was, why do I need a virtual desktop if I have a desktop? And that they were able to explain some line of business apps, security of data, closer to the data center, a lot of different reasons there, but it's just not automatic that just because you have a desktop that there's not a purpose behind that technology. And it's fast. It, it was as if it was running on the local device. Yeah, it was I've, really been, I've been running, you know, I had ran um, VMs on yeah. Azure for the last two years, probably. And they run, they're really no different than a remote desktop instance, yep. even local. Right. Um, Mike, could you see for, for when you think about what, what examples for the average guy do you think you would use a virtual desktop for or would you? 
is, is any need, any need in, is you're thinking about what you do or you just like, I'd rather just access this as a cloud and be done and not have any hardware. I know that's hard for us because yeah, we're big have hardware. To have hardware. <laughs> yeah. right? but, but my, you gotta have something to see it through. I'm a big hardware guy, but the one thing, the one company I've actually seen starting to use this effectively is something like Plex, right? Where you have a Plex media server that is actually in the cloud. Now Plex does this offering for you and it's not actually acting like a VM. For, I haven't used it, but essentially you have all of your storage in the cloud and then the VM runs Plex. You don't longer have to worry about having a Plex dedicated box that has this beefy CPU and that can transcode and that can do everything you then have this machine in the cloud that would be traditionally something that you would have in a rack or on a desktop. So stuff like that, along with any sort of just light application stuff or, you know, things where you just need a very thin client, like you guys have talked about, uh, where you can access something beefier in the cloud and something with multiple, um, like we're talking about with multiple endpoints in one VM uh, is, is very interesting to me because I think of, you know, as my kids go older, they don't need a big beefy, computer if they had something in the cloud, some sort of VM that could run a lot of their, their stuff for them. Uh, for the average guy, though, I still, I, I it's a little bit, I think, too much for the average guy, yeah, right? I think this it's is, still out there a little bit. Yeah, for just a little bit. But as it gets more accessible, the thing I love about this is people are going to be using it without even realizing it, I think, Indeed. right? They're, they're not going to think about setting up a VM. It's just going to be what happens. It's going to be their computing environment before they even realize it. Well, and I wonder how long before that gets hybrid for us. So I might be on a low power piece of hardware and when the process is, needs more than the CPU can provide, it offloads that to an Azure instance or an AWS instance to be processed and come back. Yep. We don't really see a lot of that today, but you know we're not gonna continue to get battery uh, efficiencies on high power CPU units, right? That's just, we gotta continue to get more and more efficient. I think we're seeing the industry moving towards ARM. And, and yes, our friends at Qualcomm have done a nice job of getting some pretty good computing on those chips. But at the end of the day, there's still some physical limitations mm -hmm. on what we can and can't do. And I, I just, I think 90% of the population, to be honest, is can get away with 95% of the time with a pretty low power chip. And we could be getting days or weeks worth of battery life yeah. on our equipment, right? Instead of it being, you know, eight hours or six in some cases. And I'd love to see some of this processing when needed offloaded, you know, kind of offloaded to the cloud. And so it would it'd go... Hey, I'm working on this thing. It'll be back right now. That sounds like a old me, the old mainframe days when you would send, like you'd be on your terminal and you would need processing power and you would have to reserve time and send that thing off. Right. Those are, those are the old days of computing. I think with machine learning and AI, this is where I actually think there's some good applications of it where it kind of knows what we do and begins to prep for that. Right. And starts kind of saying, hey, I probably should have some things ready. So when Jim asks for this kind of stuff, this is what I'm going to do. Right. Um, and so I think there's some really there's some really good applications of that there. But we have to make it transparent to the end user. And it's going to be weird on how we bill for that because it's going to yeah, take data and processing. Somebody's got to pay for the compute back at no, the other end. Yeah, no. But how many people really need like if, you know, if we could get low power PCs back in people's hands, well, or whatever, that uh, the costs go way down. Well, then maybe I have a subscription uh, to compute and yeah. I, you know, I get so much compute and in most cases I don't do it. It's kind of viewed like your, like your internet in a lot of ways, right? If I paid for it, like I paid for internet, that, that may, which is driving me nuts right now, by the way, Cox is killing me here in Nebraska. But that being said, um, Rich, I think there's, and Mike both, I think there's some interesting things coming with that where we could do this and think of it completely different than we think of it today, because we just don't need all the power that we have on the edge. And, it, it, it's truly going to take what we know as remote desktop, right? And RDP, RDS, even VDI. And it's, this is, we are in the early stages of the, the birth of this technology that's going to take us there. Right. Uh, what you mentioned, Google, right? Tomorrow, the game they're releasing that's going to be accessible through the browser is called Assassin Creed Odyssey, the latest edition of Assassin Creed. That is a high end game. I mean, I'm really curious to check it out. I don't know how they're doing it, but whether you can do it for free or not, but I plan to check it out. I want to see, I want to see how it presents in the browser because right now, 
for instance, Steam, you download the game locally to your machine, right? Even though Steam is kind of a client that gets you the stuff from the cloud, makes the connections, it's still physically running on your device. So your hardware, your video card, all have an impact on the performance of the game. On the Xbox One console, Microsoft kind of showed the capabilities of squeezing some pretty heavy duty data on your local home network and streaming to a desktop, right? So go from, I, I, I run Forza Horizon on from the console to a desktop and it's great looking and it runs well, right? Using that connection, uh, which mean it, it, which is why it makes so much sense that they connected the phone thing to that, right? They're not recreating, they're using the same technology. So Google was the first, I think, beyond simple games that's introducing a very graphics intense processing power hungry game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, into the browser. So I'm really curious to see how that's going to fly and see how it performs, because that'll be the difference. Gamers won't tolerate it if they don't get the performance. Right. No, you can't have you can't have lag. It's just, nope. it's just not going to work. I all. have lag on games I run on my desktop because of the Internet. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, Rich, we we introduced you so fast, and we got to business so quickly. We didn't even talk about uh, what you do. So, uh, uh, WindowsObserver.com is your site. Talk a little bit about what you're doing out there. Uh, when, well, WindowsObserver.com is my personal site. Uh, that site has existed in one form or another since 1995, when it was birthed on GeoCities. Uh, these days for the day job, I work for a company called Informa. They're based out of the UK, and I work for the business unit called KNEC365, and I, I'm the senior content producer for ITProToday.com. So I've shifted my professional focus into the IT Pro crowd. I still write and post on WindowsObserver.com because that's my, that's my consumer outlet, although I do write two pieces a week for our paid newsletter that we have, Windows Secrets. So, yeah, I, I, I'm lucky to have my fingers in both sides of the ball of wax, right, seeing the perspective of a consumer and this perspective of IT pros. You know, consumers are fairly well, you know, we're, we're on our sixth feature update for Windows 10. You know, I've been installing them on my wife's Windows 10 device for three years and not once have I had to go over and show her how to do something. So, so I know that works, right? That you mentioned it. The updates aren't earth shattering and fireworks type of updates. They're very incremental and very steady. I was going to, you, you made me think of this point that I said to somebody else earlier this week, compare inking on windows 10 original release to windows 10. Now on 1803, right? The April, 2018 update, it is a tremendously improved uh, uh, process. I met with somebody from the accessibility team last week at ignite. And we talked about the differences between accessibility from three years ago to now. You know, just think about it. In the in pre Windows 10, we would just barely have our hands on a brand new version of Windows out here right now, whatever it might have been called, and the changes would have been significant. And, and I this is this is not the best of comparisons, but it works. And it was one that was be used for me in the past. You know, it, you ever heard the the joke or the the comment? How do you how do you cook a frog? Mm -hmm right? You boil them slowly, right? You put them in cold water and then put them on the heat. I learned once that you don't put uh, crabs in a hot pot of water. They come climbing out. All right. I <laughs> they, learned or, or they scream real, really. They, they, I never heard the scream. screaming, but they came climbing out and clatter and scared my two-year-old daughter to death. <laughs> um, so you have things are slow, right? Incremental. And that's where we're at with Windows 10 now. So I think Microsoft made a change a few weeks ago where now the I, and I apologize for fall update. This update, the September, October update is now going to get 30 months of support for enterprise customers. So it allows them to stretch out their, their update cycle, maybe to take two or three updates off, right. And to try to get them to upgrade on a more regular basis. And you don't have to do a lot of training, right? There are some cool new features. You pointed them out, the new snip and sketch, the new way to grab screenshots with one push of the button, uh, you know, all the apps that surround the main OS and things of that nature. So I, I truly believe that that this incremental process has made it much easier to move people from build to build to build. Yeah. yeah and it's uh, to Joski in the chat room says these feature updates drive me crazy. Um, I'm curious and, to know what about them drive somebody. Uh, crazy. They, they are. It is rich. It is a lot like because you're getting your monthly ones. They're coming in. They're restarting. The cumulative right? updates, yeah, right? You're getting the cumulative, right? And then, not and then changes, every six months, fixes. that's a pretty significant. And and I'm not. It, I for us, I think for the enthusiasts who love to watch this thing happen, 
I think it's great for us. True. Yeah. I think for the standard user, it's not as, I mean, uh, Kyle Wilcox in our chat room or in our uh, Facebook group, he, you know, he was purposely trying to hold some things off because of the user experience with his wife and it, it, he misunderstood kind of what the, the delay meant and he thought he had more time uh, on the gotcha. delay and then all of a sudden it rebooted. Yeah, the minute you turn off that delay and you yeah. re-enable it, you have to do an update yeah. check. And my wife is the most non-technical person in the world. And so she's kind of my, my measuring stick when it comes to this stuff. And just the sheer fact that I can remember upgrading her from, for instance, from Windows Vista to Windows 7, uh, you know, XP to Vista. And there were, there was a curve there, right? She had to learn some things. But with Windows 10, for whatever reason, I've done those updates regularly. She's, she's unaware of them, and she's able to do the way she uses a computer, which is not like us, which is not like a lot of people in your chat room, right? She, she uses her computer very much like an appliance, like a lot of everyday users do. They want to turn it on, see their Facebook, see their email, browse the web. That's what they expect out of it. Rich, at one point they had talked about making these downloads smaller by, well, two ways. One, by only giving you the delta between what's new and like what you needed, right? Or two, if I was, say, I had downloaded one of my PCs locally had downloaded it, it would pull from there. Yeah. I don't I think either one of those. Well. Yeah. I never that seen either. never worked well that I could ever test. I could never see my other PCs feeding another PC, right? right. And m maybe that's because I go to every machine at the same time and say update. <laughs> yes, I'm, okay. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but they have done some work on the Delta. You mentioned the Delta update. So yeah. basically cumulative updates, for instance, every month are that way. They only download what's changed on your system so that you get a, the package size will vary on feature updates. Same type of thing. Not everything on windows 10 as it sets under 1803 is changed in 1809. So that Delta package is smaller, should be smaller. Most of the time, I, I still think there's some work they have to do on that process to kind of really get it firm. Because I tell you what, it, this last six month dev cycle for redstone five, I've been bumping against my one terabyte limit on Comcast. A couple different times I got within a couple hundred gigs and I got a little nervous because mm -hmm. there were so many, there's so much coming down. But I also have what, three devices. I got six wow. devices I'm updating so that, you know, we're, I'm, I'm not abnormal in that sense, you know, from a user perspective. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's a love-hate thing. You know, yeah. the phones update just as often and, it, it, you know, Mike, we, we just got a new system update, right, right on the iPhone, which brought some cool, pretty cool features like... Now I know how much screen time I have. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, that, you know, now I let's see what else have I oh now my notifications do tell me just how many I have stacked up that make me feel even more <laughs> guilty. <laughs> right, Mike? Anything else in there? Like when we think about the update for iOS twelve, like there was there was quite a few new things in there, right? Yeah, just I mean overall uh, performance updates too coming in, and then um, multiple person FaceTime is coming with twelve point one, so we'll see that come down. Uh, you got a lot of updates to the keyboard. You've got, we talked about this last week, LastPass or whatever password manager you have integration and you can replace iCloud keychain, which is a huge update. Dude, Those just automatically work. Wow. I have been using the hell out of that feature. Me too. And the fact that it uses Face ID, which are, I love my Face ID. Jim, you're still on Touch ID, right? Yeah, still Touch. Um, so either way though, the, it works great yeah. With it's the way LastPass was meant to be on your phone, and no, it was iOS open yeah. it up and let, let you be that way. Uh, and then a lot of you know, like I said, I like the under the hood updates because for me, my battery for some reason has been lasting way longer on iOS 12 than it was before. Yeah, I've had a few inner, I've had a few Wi Fi problems since. Oh, the really? Update. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to it, it, like it loses its way, and I and that, I don't know that's I, been popping up, you know, that it, right? No, there, somebody was trying to correlate. The why, what chipset, because you, uh, didn't they move to a new chipset in the new phone? Yeah. 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 And so yeah. somebody was, I saw something on social media. Somebody was trying to correlate these Wi Fi drops and connectivity drops to certain hardware. Yeah. Every once in a while, Mike, on my phone, I just, I, it's, I don't lose the internet. It just stops working. And you know, I, you know, I shake it and that doesn't do anything. <laughs> but, um, well, so, but this is interesting because as Tajuski's talking about this in the chat room. You know, uh, an Android's even worse as far as uh, just the sheer number of changes that are going on with their apps and the ecosystem and the OS. 
and they're changing every two years. So it's, yeah. it's not, you know, and it, and it, the, the phones get the, the, for some people, not all cases, but the phones get the benefit of the data. Everybody's like, Oh, that's okay. It's fine. I'll just update it. That's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, but windows is so different in people's minds and yeah. they just when it's their PC, it's just completely different. Yeah. Rich, you're also doing the observe tech podcast. I do. Yeah. So if anybody's new to me and has not caught rich on observe tech, if you want the best, most informed, no spin zone on what's going on with windows and what's going on with Microsoft, uh, Rich is your guy, literally. And Rich, I've told you this before. I put you on like 1.4 speed. And yeah. There are times I have to pause and take a breath. Yeah, I'm, I I talk pretty fast at normal speed on that podcast. I probably cover 40, 45 headlines, probably about a minute on each or so, maybe a little bit longer. But yeah, yeah no, it, it's a format that has continued to do very well. I get a lot of great feedback on it, and I appreciate that to, from everybody. Um, it's fun to do because basically I take the headlines and I, I just add a, I add a little commentary to them. Uh, I, I do some catch up for insiders, right? And where we stand and where we're at the latest builds and in, walk through some stuff like that. It, it's, it's, you know, podcasting is, and we were talking in DM beforehand. I just learned about Spotify opening up their podcast directory. Man, that submission process was like that. that was, yeah, it's great. Log now. in and submit yeah. your RSS feed. I also recently got added to iHeartRadio. That happened about a month ago because one of my listeners contacted me and said, Rich, I've changed up some things here. I'm using iHeart now. You're not on iHeart. So I went and looked into it and it took about three weeks for them to finally get back to me. And I guess they do review it and okay it. But now I'm on iHeart Radio, for instance. So uh, as well as through the, the windowsobserver.com is where the, the podcast is published at each week. And, it, you know, it, it, it's been interesting. You know, I, I know the habits of a few of my listeners because I got one guy over in the Netherlands who I know listens on Monday morning. So I know if for some reason I miss a Sunday recording, he's driving to work the next morning, not with the podcast, and I hear about it. So it, it's great fun. It's a great way to connect with people. Uh, at Microsoft Ignite, for instance, I had folks walking up to me that listen to the podcast that follow you on Twitter and, you know, you know and introducing themselves and de-virtualizing, as I put it, that relationship, which I think is terrific. Uh, and, and, you know, that's the other thing about Ignite. I might only produce three or five pieces during the week, but the contacts you make with the teams and the, the knowledge and sharing you're going on there, it really lasts a long time. So it's, yeah. it, it, and I'll be in Dallas in about 10 days, actually for a week for our IT DEF CON, which is our company's tech conference that we do. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that because it's a much smaller scale. 30,000 people is a lot of people moving around, even in Orange County. Uh, convention center in Orlando. Now you did hear they announced on the last day of Ignite, they're moving Ignite from September to November next year, mm -hmm. which is an interesting move. I don't know if that was availability or if that was probably. a conscious move. It probably was. No, I bet it was availability. It's kind of nice. That's when the MVP summit used to be. And it then they moved be, us, yeah. right? They moved us in into market. the spring. It, and, but I also had the thought that would also be post the this time frame of the year so we're going to call it, next year they're going to call it 19h1 and 19h2 so it'll be the second update of the year it'll be after that's released so that's that true. might also true. bleed into maybe certain sessions yeah yeah well rich uh for folks who don't listen to you you should if you're listening to me you should listen to rich it's the best 45 minutes of my day in a lot of cases as i i listen to you uh halfway on the way in and halfway on the way back and it really is for me that quick like if I want to know what's going on in this space, for me, it's just a super fast way. You do a nice job of summarizing it. It's not a lot of spin. It's giving me just the information I need to know. If I want more details, I can hit your show notes. Go go get more details. I have details. extensive show notes. You do. Yeah. Like so for this show, when Mike and I do it, it's a lot of talking and a little bit of show notes, right? <laughs> When you do it, it's a little bit of talking and a whole bunch of show every notes. headline has a show note. Yeah, no, it's it's super. It's good. a great way to connect people to the info so they can go get more. That's the little that's observed the tech. Observed tech podcast yep. is what it is. You can actually find it at observed.tech these days. Nice. I got a dot tech nice. domain for it. No, no, congrats on that. And okay, you know what? I've known you now for I don't know, four or five years, and I've just kind of watched you grow into this space and become just a real leader in journalism in this area. And so congrats. I, Thanks I don't know if you sense. ever in, in, intended to start. No, down this path. not at all. Like, I think it's been a surprise for you in a lot of ways. Like one thing led to another and then pretty yeah. soon 
You're I like doing just, some amazing guys, stuff. I, everybody listen. I was just your everyday standard kind of enthusiastic blogger, right? And I, I had this podcast that I did on a fairly regular basis, right? But, and I, I got to admit, I, the podcast was going on before I retired in 2011 from the Navy. And so I was able to put a lot more constancy into, you know, consistency into it when I retired. But, you know, it, I was just a happy-go-lucky blogger guy, right? Writing at windowsobserver.com, doing my thing, working for a software company from home. It was the best of both worlds. And then out of the blue in 2015, just before Windows 10 came out, this one person approaches me because we had met and had a relationship through social media and at tech conferences uh, back in the day, tech ed. And the, there was a big change going on at a certain property. And I was asked to come in freelance behind that. And two years later, that freelancing turned into a full-time position. And, and yeah, you're right. I, I never expected it to be what it is. Well, that freelance work, I think you just picked up because you thought it'd be fun. And I think it, yeah, it was what I did. And I figured, yeah, I yeah I'm going to like, oh, yeah. yeah, write a few things. And yep. I, I don't think you thought that was going to be a big deal. And then they asked you to do more. And then some, yep. and some companies bought other companies and yep. got asked to do some more things. And I, I think it's one of those great stories of if you're just available. It's always not about ability, but it's about availability. Yeah. And you were just learning. A, I'm still learning today. No, no, no. You're doing a great job. I, I really appreciate you and and what you do out there. And so, Rich, thanks for taking the time. Mike and I are going to spend a little time uh, doing some Apple stuff, so we will let you go. But we, All right, appreciate, buddy. we appreciate the hour that you gave to us, Rich. Always Super. great to see you. Always. I'll miss you at the summit. I'm, I, I got to find some more ways to run into you now. Now you that, won't be uh, at the summit? No, Dave and I are no longer MVPs. You guys were you? from Windows Insider MVP? I know. We both. I did we, not know that. We both declined. The oh, MVP. you declined. Okay. So it was an active decline. Yeah, we both. both oh, I can't speak for Dave. I just felt like I wasn't able to give the time. Yeah, gotcha. I get there and I was just goofing around. And it was fun. Great team. Love those guys. Great week of a vacation. But I was like, you know what? There's folks like you who are really doing this stuff that really deserve to be there. And I just, I felt bad about taking a slot. So mm -hmm. I was like, eh, so I talked to the team and they were like, yeah, it's okay. So it was cool. nice to, I, in, to be honest, I just have not had the time. I've got other stuff going I on. I hear you. So. Well, I'm looking for a couple new conferences next year because we're not going to go to CES anymore. Okay. Well, good There's for just you. not enough enterprise <laughs> business yeah. stuff at CES yeah. for us good. to cover. So I'm actually in the market to look for a couple other options. So who knows? All right. Rich, thanks, Rich, always great to see you, man. Thanks. All thanks. Right, take for care, jumping everybody. In. Take care. Yeah, you bet. We'll see you next time. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for jumping in. Yep. Mike, I think we got a few extra minutes to roll through this. You've got some updates on some power stuff you've done with your phone. We kind of teased it a little bit as we were talking about our phones, but you've done some new stuff. Talk about it. Yeah. So I, I made the jump. I don't know what caused me to make this jump, I guess. Well, I, I guess I do. I know what caused this. So, um, as part of like a gift package I got, I went to an auction and I got this golf gift package. One of the things in there was a battery pack, you know, just your typical battery pack. It's actually a pretty high capacity one. It's one, it's a, you know, about the size of your hand. And the cool part about this one was though, it had wireless charging built in. So instead of carrying around a cord to connect to this thing, you would just set it on your desk and set your phone on top. I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. But I went to go set my phone on top of it and I realized that I couldn't use it because I had the metal plate in my phone as an example, right there, just like you, there, just right like there. that. Yeah, okay. Because both you and I were big fans of the car mounts. They use the magnetic car mount, which means you mm. put a plate in between your case and your phone. So I was like, oh man, that kind of stinks. This is kind of the first time I've ever been interested in using wireless charging. I've just never used. It. I had an iPhone 10 for a while, which supports it, and and never used it. But like, you know what? Okay, maybe I give this a chance. Let's. So let's see. What would it take to get into wireless charging? I said, well. So I need something in my car because my biggest thing is that I have that mount, right? So I need a mount that can also do Qi charging. So I did find one um, and it'll be in the show notes, but it is the Squishy brand. Uh, so what this is, is it's a gra they call it a gravity mount, right? So this version connects to your vent, but you can also get a different adapter that could just stick right onto your dash, whatever you want to do. But as you slide your phone into the case or into the mount as it hits the bottom, the sides pinch in. So it, it doesn't take any snapping in. You just slide the phone in as it hits the bottom, the arm squeeze in and it's got wireless charging built in. So you've got one cord, which is a micro USB that comes down. You plug that into your USB adapter in your car. And all of a sudden you have a wireless charger mount in your car, which is pretty cool. So that, that took care of that. So like, okay. So now I can take out the metal plate. I'm all good. I have a mount in my car. So 
I've talked about it on the show before. Everything power related for all my mobile devices, I have just come to trust and love Anchor Brand. A N K E R. If you guys haven't used them, they just make super high quality products. Um, their customer service is fantastic. If you ever do have an option, all of my iPhone cords and chargers, even before the wireless one, have been um, have an Anchor Brand. I have one right here. I have a five port right on my desk that I can plug stuff into. But what Anchor makes is this really cool stand that is also a wireless charger. So it's great for your desk. I had, so when I had that magnet mount, I had a regular desktop magnet mount stand for my desk at work. Didn't have any charging built in, but it was just a stand you could, you know, snap my phone to since I already had that on there. So I got really used to having my phone in a stand. So Anchor makes these, and I can't remember the exact model on this. I'll have to look it up. It's it's the only one Anchor made. They make two. So Anchor Qi Charger. Um, they make two versions. One has a higher capacity, faster charging than the other one. So just depending on what you want, I think they're anywhere from $19.99 to $29.99. So also very affordable, which is what I really like about these. So for 30 bucks, you can grab one. So I grabbed one for work and for home. And now I've kind of switched all of my chargers to wireless charging, which is kind of fun. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, one thing I have not researched is what is healthier for your battery. Is it better to plug in via core? Is it better to the heat from wireless charging? Is that going to cause me an issue over the long term? So we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I think it's going to work out pretty well. I trust anchor. Um, I don't think, you know, I don't think the phone manufacturers would put wireless charging in and be selling all the different wireless chargers if they didn't, if it had a detrimental effect to your battery. Uh, but that's just what I think. So, We'll see how it goes. This honestly, these uh, these just came in the other day. So I've only been doing it for a little while, but I, I really do. I've been liking it. It's pretty convenient. I never thought I would be the type that would like wireless charging, but uh, I kind of do kind of get into it. Well, it's you're getting me to think I might. I, I, I kind of need to change over the whole Bluetooth. We were talking about this in the pre-show. My I have a Belkin Bluetooth one. It was 50, no, 25 bucks. It sucks. It's really bad. And uh, although I'm, I'll be buying a new car in the next year or so, maybe a year and a half. And I'm just thinking, eh, maybe I just wait for the new car to come. It works for now. I keep, you know, I actually run. So for whatever reason on the Belkin uh, Bluetooth adapter that I have, I can't have it plugged in and the phone plugged into that port at the same time. It keeps dropping the charging, which makes the, um, I have no idea. My Fitbit has now telling me I got 12,000 steps. And I think you've watched me, Mike. I've been yeah. sitting here for the last hour. That's how you've been half. winning. Don't tell Mike Howard, but Jim just sits and podcasts and it he has just, his watch set. It just, I was at 11,000 and some change, but I, I don't know how that, that happened. Sarah just came in and said, did you hear they solved the murder because of somebody's Fitbit? Well, what, what just happened is it just told me I had 12,000 steps and I haven't moved. I have not been walking. You know, we, we know when you shake your hand, right? When you shake your hand, it does steps. I don't know. Give me another beer, would you? So <laughs> she didn't like that. Um, so it, 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 um, yeah. So for whatever reason, when I would plug it, it had a port, you plug it into the cigarette lighter and then you would yeah. plug in the power to it. And for a while it would just stop charging. And then of course that resets the, the Bluetooth, which right, it was just a mess. So I had to run the long, the original white cable that came with the phone. It now runs along the side of the seat and goes into the Bluetooth or it goes into the charger that's in my console yeah. in my, in the gotcha. arm. It's so jankity. So <laughs> could you just get a different car chart? Cause like I have the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. port from anchor um, car. No, for the Bluetooth adapter, the charger is all, it's all in one. Oh, it's all see, in one unit. That's yeah. the, okay. See, so I have, I got to look at which brand I have. So I have the same thing as you, Jim. So my car does not have Bluetooth. So I have the same thing. I have, it's like a little disc, right? It sticks to your dash, comes down. I actually think mine might be Anchor brand now that I think of it. It's decent. Uh, the microphone on is terrible, but for getting audio in, it works. So I have the Anchor four port car charger. We were talking about this earlier. I run my dash cam. So I have a, uh, dash cam, the Bluetooth and the wireless charger all on that. And it, it runs fine. They all seem to charge pretty, yeah. pretty well. I, I don't know what the deal with it is. I had to, I've had to replace the blue or the, uh, ox in already once that the, the ox in broke on my Honda civic. So I bought the part, I had to pull some dash stuff off. This is we, again, we were talking in pre-show, but, uh, Mark said, why don't you just replace the radio with the Bluetooth enable one? And I, 
looked at the instructions to pull the dash off. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I am not pulling the dash off my Honda. Not in a million years. It's like this clip here and that clip here and this clip there. And then do this and clip that. And I'm like, uh, okay, you had me at the first clip. Not gonna, not going to do it. So, um, yeah, I got a little work. Um, well, I just got some thinking to do. I, I like... I like the ability to to be able to charge this, but then I kind of think, well, you know, but by where I sleep, I now have two cords. I literally just plug this in and set it down. It's not like it; it's all that much different to be setting it on something to wirelessly charge it for me. The battery life has been so good, to be honest. I'm barely yeah. charging it, so I think of those things, and then I kind of go, "Do I really need, you know, to spend another fifty bucks on all this?" And where I, I found it helpful, you're right. At night, I probably could have gotten away with not having one of these by my bedside because yeah. at night you're plugging in. It's at work. You're sitting down at your desk. You do because I'm up and down at meetings all day. So I come back in, I just set it down, not having to do that extra step. It's been great. Just come sit down, plop it in. You're kind of done. You yeah. sit down where you're going to set it anyway. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Well, good stuff. Good update on that. Hey, and then you've got a few Mojave um, uh, things to emphasize. Yeah, let's save that. Let's okay. we'll, we'll, we'll do an update. We'll do that next week. Uh, speaking of that, next week, uh, Dwayne Robinson's back. So he'll, I'm sure he'll give us a little bit of a crypto update on some of the things he's doing, some of the work he's doing at Microsoft. It will probably not be a Microsoft-dominated show like it was this week, but Dwayne is a good friend of the show, and he'll be back, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what's going on uh, there as well. Mike, anything else before we kind of wrap it and go into some post-show crypto? No. Got I a great, I have a great conversation. Show. I have a great, I, I never thought I'd say this sentence. I have a great Saya conversation. And I'm excited because I purposely did not look up this news once you told me so that you could, you could tell me about it. Never Which thought. Probably I a would. very bad thing to say as a podcast host that I didn't look up the story. No, but never thought I'd get Saya and exciting in the no. same, in the same, uh, in the same sentence. Don't forget if you want to support us, want to support the show, you can do that via Patreon. Some of you always ask, hey, how do I help? What's going on there? And if you want to do that, theaverageguy.tv slash support gets you there. Or you can just go out to theaverageguy.tv. There's a Patreon link there in the section. There's some black icons. It's right. Well, no, I don't have the right screen up. It's uh, it's right. Actually, it's right there if you're uh, right there if you're on the site. And um, if you want to do that, we have plans for as little as a buck. Of course, we appreciate your sponsorship. That's what actually pays for the mobile app now. So appreciate what you're doing. If you want to send me an email, Jim at the average guy TV is kind of the right way to do it. You can find me on Twitter at Jay Collison. Uh, we your tech, right? For you, Mike on Twitter. Yes. If you want to join the Facebook group, which is where kind of all the action is happening right now. And some grilling action is what's going on in the Facebook group right now. Everybody's talking about grilling. Mike, what'd you pick up? You picked up a new grill. Yeah. I picked up a little, uh, what, what even brand is it? I don't know. Char, Char, uh, I should know that brand. Yeah, a little tailgate grill. I was going back and forth. I couldn't decide if I wanted the... Uh, charbroil. Charbroil, thank you. It is the Charbroil tabletop black portable gas grill. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah. But it does all those little one-pound propane tanks. It's already. It's actually really nice. Mm -hmm. I went out and set it on my back patio, and I wanted to test it make sure, because we're going to the Chiefs game this weekend. That was the main reason I got it. So we're heading down to the Chiefs. We're going to tailgate. I was like, ah, oh, can I grab one of those? I went and cooked some burgers on it last night. I, yeah. You forget, Jim. So when you've gone from a huge pellet grill that takes a little while to heat up, takes a long time, then you smell like smoke. You smell like you've been around a bonfire after you cook. You forget how nice it is to go out and turn on a propane and just do some burgers real quick. It's so, ready yeah. in five ready I think five it's got minutes. me ready to buy probably another gas, a bigger gas grill for, for the backyard to complement the smoker. It is nice just having a straight grill. I'm not, I'm not going to lie yeah. up and up and running in a few minutes. Uh, if you join the Facebook group, Kevin uh, threw out this morning, a fire inch, uh, look, it looks like the Amazon fire seven inch tablet. They did a fire, literally a fire sale on them, 15 bucks. And if you bought it through Amazon shipping and you have prime shipping was free. So I picked up a seven inch fire tablet for uh 15 bucks. I missed that. I went to go click on it and it was already sold out. Yeah. He said they would sell out fast. And I, he was right. I I'm almost always, I miss those. I was at work. I went right to it. I connected Woot to Amazon to make it work. I paid for it. $15 at shipping. I hope. I, mean, I have to check Amazon to make sure indeed it's going to ship. You know, sometimes they sell those things like, oh, sorry, we ran out of stuff. Not a big deal. I don't really care. But to get an Android tablet for 15 bucks, not a bad way to go. And Kevin, I appreciate the deals. Those are the, That's an example of some of the deals that Kevin puts in the Facebook group. So even if you hate Facebook, love our group, come out and join us. Facebook.com slash group slash the average guy. 
and uh, ask to be let in. I will let you in as well. Don't forget the average guy.tv's platform, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove partners, get secure, reliable, high speed hosting from people that you know, and you trust, you know, that's Christian. And so for more information, visit maplegrovepartners.com. All one word. Christian just did. We just did cyber frontiers 49. And he talked about a day when passwords will no longer exist. Oh. And so if you want, yeah, it's good. It was a good show. A good show. Good show. A lot of future thinking on that one, but a good show. Cyber Frontiers 49 is out and we'll record 50, I think, this week. Well, not this week. You're probably listening to it and it's this week, but uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, we're going to get that done as well. Don't forget. Let's see what it's. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to download us on the on the, the app. I talked about that earlier. HomeGadgetGeeks.com. Free. Just download it. Just have it ready for you. And then, Mike, I sent you a coupon for HelloFresh. Did you buy it? Not yet. Did you? I was All going right. to do that this weekend because I was talking to Hannah and she's like, well, let's do it. Let's order this weekend for next week because next week will be a perfect week for us to do it. Look, look, I literally five, I have five coupons here. We are, we, I just, this is so awesome. Again, I make nothing off this. I just, I don't know why I'm so crazy about it. One, because it's changed my cooking life. Like food matters all of a sudden. Again, it's fresh. It's real. It's tasty. We made, Sarah made, we made stuffed, uh, stuffed peppers last night. and. Oh my God, it was so good. Even Sarah, who's a pretty good cook, as she was eating this, she goes, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> and there was some left in the pan and she's like, should we save it? I'm like, no, <laughs> no let's work, eat that work now. Work it over. So she yeah. got her, she went up with her plate. She she emptied the, the pan onto the plate and the two of us sat next to each other and just fought for the last bit of of doing that. So I've, I'm sending coupons out. If you need one of these, let me know. Jim at the average guy TV. I'm just giving them away guys. And I think these are, um, I forget there were 70 bucks, maybe 60, 70 bucks, something like that. Off your, basically get your first week for free and then you can give it a try. All right. We are live every Thursday, pre-am central nine Eastern out here at the average guy TV slash live. We'll do some crypto crypto will be available at Patreon. It's free. You just have to go over and get it. Patreon.com slash no. The average guy.tv slash Patreon is where you want to go. We'll be back next Thursday, Dwayne Robinson. With that, we'll say goodnight, everybody. All right. If you caught this part of the video, you made it all the way to Patreon. Congratulations. And a new Oktoberfest. Look at that. Boom. Thank you. Sarah brought me into Oktoberfest. I was getting a little, you know, sometimes how beer just kind of dries you out a little bit yes, and you need definitely. more beer. You need, you need beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you need more beer to hell yeah totally yeah you need you need uh, it's like oh it tastes so good it's that time of the year it's fall and god the fall beers are so good mike we were at a crescent moon here in omaha you love crescent moon oh my gosh food is good beer is good went over to beer topia well they had i had a vanilla uh, coffee stout uh there that from brickway which is i think a local yes. that's been my so so Brickway, the owner of Brickway was on. So we did an innovation panel that I was on at Carson Group. And uh, he's actually one of our clients. So he came over um, and was part of the innovation panel. He, the owner is just the coolest guy you will ever meet. He's all about just, I mean, talk about a guy who cares about his employees, about innovating. He's one of those innovative guys who owns a brewery I've ever met. Mm. He is just into what he does. He yeah. loves the craft. Uh, so if you have, if you're anywhere close to Omaha and you have access to Brickway, give them a try. Cause number one, he's just a great guy. And number two, it's amazing beer. I have their Oktoberfest. Yeah. Um, everything they make is yeah. great. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get more you're a whiskey guy. They make I, a really good whiskey. Really? Yeah. Oh man. I, I, I'm going to, this could be a brand I could get hooked on. I'm oh, not going to lie. It's Jim. It's yeah. totally right up your alley. Yeah. No, we, so Beertopia now they have a, it didn't used to be this way, but you can now get from Crescent Moon through a party room into Beertopia. And I ordered, or I, they had a six pack of this coffee stout in it. It's like smoking a good cigar. It just kind of lingers there. Oh, you know? really? Oh, I haven't man. tried the coffee stout. Dude, so good. Like, in, so uh, just so good. So we were drinking Oktoberfest because you have to, like yeah. this time of the year, you have to. And they were actually running out this, you know, we're in October and, and Oktoberfest isn't in October. It's a September holiday in Germany. But um, uh, actually one of the Oktoberfest beers I ordered, she, she, I, she brought it out and it was about, oh, 
three quarters full. And she's like, we just, the keg is gone. Like, this is the last. She's like, do you want it? I'm like, yeah. She's like, it's free. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so yes. and then she brought me another. Um, that's when I did the coffee stout. And it, that was such a good dessert. Good dessert beer. Oh, man, it was so good. So I'll have to grab some of those. Take down to Kansas City this weekend. I always like grabbing an Omaha beer and taking it down there. Yeah, no, right on. And then we got some Founders, which is uh, oh, Min- uh, Minneapolis or yep. one of those up there. Michigan? No, maybe it's a Michigan beer. And uh, this time of the fall, they always do like a raspberry, which is uh, just super good. So if you're into Shandies, it's not a Shandy, but if you're into Shandies there, Founders Raspberry is pretty spectacular. And it's uh, it's limited time. They don't do it all year long. It's super good. Uh, uh, not DJs, but mm, starts with a D, Exarbon area. Maybe it doesn't start with a D. Anyways, there's another bar and grill down there that keeps that. Or, or Last time I was there, and I shouldn't say last time, but they had that raspberry on nitro on tap. Oh, Dude. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. It's incredible. The head was like a milkshake. It was like a raspberry milkshake. It was so good. So, all right. We didn't come here to talk beer, but man, the fall is just the best. It's the best beer time. It's very true. Okay. Saya. We're talking Saya. They're forking at the end of the month. So if you want to know the, I'll give it, I'll kind of bring everybody up to speed. So like two years ago, yeah, two years ago, Saya, the, the, the kind of, there's a parent company, I think it's called Nebulous who, who, and I shouldn't say parent company, but they're a big, they're a LLC behind Saya in the the way it kind of works. They said, Hey, we're going to create ASIC miners for this. And who wants to help fund it? Cause it's like $5 million to build an ASIC pipeline, right? You just don't like, eh, it's, you know, three ninety nine. No, it's like $5 million. And then you still have to sell the equipment, right? Yeah, the so reason a lot being of... ASICs can only do one task yeah. really well. So you're developing a computer that can only mine your cryptocurrency. Yeah. So, uh, Tijowski, if you're still out there, he said, what's the Facebook group? If you're still out there... I put it out still... there for him. Oh, did you? Okay, good. Yep. Awesome. So, I yeah, I see it right below there now. <laughs> so... Uh, they announced they're going to do ASICs, but it takes them forever to get these ASICs out there. And bit bit miners, no, yeah, Ant Man, Ant Bit Miner, Ant Miner, one of those companies doesn't matter. Bit Mean, makes bit mean it. that's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> Beats them to the punch. And two companies beat them to the punch, actually, and start getting these things out and basically make the the obelisk miners they were going to do just. Not even like it makes them obsolete before and people had already prepaid and pre-ordered these things. Yeah, and for a lot of money. Yeah, lots of money, a couple thousand dollars each. Basically obsolete. So last summer, this is all. This is going down last fall. Pisses off the community. People are super mad. There's a whole discussions about forking. Like, okay, so let's fork the 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 chain. And basically make it so those those um, ASICs don't work anymore. And it's like, so that just was, it was a civil war with Saya. It was crazy to watch from the outside. This was about the time, like, you and I were still mining Saya, I think, at the time. Or at least oh, I yeah. was. Right around that time, okay. It was right around that time. And it was right around, remember, they had that problem where the difficulty dropped and you could, like, in three yeah, days. Yeah, we, we loaded up. Yeah, like 90% of the Saya that I own, we mined in that weekend. Like right. it was just nuts, right? That was all around that time. So it starts a civil war. The community ultimately decides back in December, no fork. They're not going to fork. So these guys are just cranking all through the winter, January, February, just cranking through the summer, cranking, doing pretty well. But the community, is, it's brewing in the background and these miners are getting ready to come out. And somehow there's a whole bunch of politics behind this. They decide we're going to fork. And so, I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, they decide we're forking and we're forking at the end of the month. I mean, like, no, like not like, Hey, let's give it a couple months for people to figure this out. They are absolutely forking Saya and it's they're, they're they built something into the obelisk, the ASIC miner that, that this company came with that kind of makes it a forced monopoly. So like, Going forward on the new fork, only their miners will work. Well, that's not decentralized, right? I mean, yeah. for the most part, that's the not. A, 
Yeah. It's, you know, so, oh my, the, the drama around this, like the, the flaming that is going on in the community right now is just something fierce out there. They are just all griping about it. And of course in Facebook, the Facebook group for Saya, of course it, it kind of attracts people who are, um, oh, maybe not informed <laughs> for the most part. So they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. They have, they have no idea what's going on, uh, with it. And, um, and, and of course it, uh, it, yeah, it's inflamed the community. It's in a lot of ways, it's kind of the best of, it's the best of the blockchain. Like this is what should happen. Like people should be angry. There should be battling that this, this is how you get consensus in a lot of ways when everybody just does things like, Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. You just, that's Okay. Like that, you don't get, you don't get great solutions that way. Right? right. You get, you get, you get great solutions when you battle over it in this fork. The beauty of the blockchain is when it forks, both forks will work. In fact, for you and me, it may be better if both forks, if both, if both blockchains fork, because you'll have whatever you have on Saya on both forks after. Right. And if two communities, if, if the community that owned the bit, the bitman, the bitmain, and the mm, yeah, I can't pronounce the other one in a silicon, um, if they actually can take that fork and do something with it, the miners, everybody who was on the blockchain before, could benefit because now everything's doubled, right? Right. So, do so, I need to transfer I all my coin back into a Sia wallet? I would get it in a Sia wallet. Yeah. Okay, because I, I have it back on. Where do I? I don't even know where I have it. <laughs> it might be a good idea. I, I have it on Bittrex yeah. because I transfer I everything to Bittrex. So I was, a, I was right. ready for a sell, right? So that's all right. I can transfer in and out real quick. Okay. So put it back in the SIA wallet. I would get okay. it local. Yep. And just see what happens. Uh, we'll have to track this towards the end of the month. It'll be fun. We haven't had a good fork that we've actually cared about in a I while. Know, we haven't. No. Because <laughs> the last one that forked that, um, I'm trying to remember what we had. Uh, cash, but uh, Zcash, yeah. Yeah, Zcash, yeah. Well, and, Zcash, and then Bitcoin, yeah, forked right. There was one that came together, yeah. It, it It's just good, like, this is this is exciting. This is the good stuff of the cyber skulls. Thanks for that info out there, by the way. Um, this is the best part of the blockchain. I think we need we need this kind of stuff to kind of help flush this stuff out and make it legit. If if it's supposed to be everything it's supposed to be, which is a little bit democratized, a little bit decentralized, a little bit like these kinds of things need to happen so we can get all this stuff worked out. Like, right. what does it mean? Will it work? What's precedent? You know, as a lawyer, law is all based on precedent. What happened before? <laughs> yeah. Where, what's your case law, right? Yeah. No, no. What, what, what was decided before? And I think we need some of that history because... We can't predict anything if we don't know, if we don't have these kinds of things happening. Um, and so it's good. I think it's good for the community. I think it's going to be hard and there's going to be people who hate it. And there's soup. There are people just pissed off who bought the, who bought into the other ASICs that, you know, have been just cranking out. So I'm kind of hoping both communities can survive. I don't know if that'll be the case. We'll have to see. There's a lot of weird things that have to go on. Somebody's going to need to pick up the other fork and do development with it. So for all those folks who bought those other miners, you better recruit some developers who yeah. can pick up the pick up the pieces from the fork and continue it on. Hey, that's what happened to Ethereum, right? Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, it's all true. based on that kind of fork. They still survive today. Um, so um, <laughs> Cyberskull says we need some Jim coin. Now the last thing, and it would be GYM. <laughs> we need some GYM coin, some Jim coin. Um, no. We don't need any Jim coin, but it's super cool. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad it was getting super boring. <laughs> the, what we were following was like, God, this stuff is boring. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's okay. It's okay. I mean, burst is interesting and that of course burst continues to drop, right? Seven something now, I think is the, no, it was going up. No, no, no. The, the block pay. Oh, the, the block yes. payout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah going up is relative. <laughs> well, are you still mining on those? I am. Okay. Yeah, I got sixty gig. 
I, I, I chickened out and stopped selling. And, um, so I think I'm mining with around not gig 60 terabytes or so 60 to 65 is kind of where I'm at. I'm making probably 450 first coin a, uh, a week. Okay. So it's not too bad. Yeah. No, not too bad. Yeah. Just kind of let it go. It's been, you know, it's been going up and down a little bit and I don't know what the price is right now. I could, I could do the, I could do the burst price. Oh, no, I can't do the burst price. Cause I, I, something broke when I up, when I upgraded windows on all my stuff, it broke a uh, mouse without borders. Oh, so I got to figure out. Can't check. <laughs> um, so cyber skull says, uh, it's at seven sixty nine as a block reward. Right now, yeah, and it'll have not have, but it'll goes down. I forget what the percentage is. I forget how often every month, something like that. Every every certain number of blocks. So I'm gonna run it. Let it run its course. Never hurts to have sixty terabytes. Said no. I know. <laughs> have you? Um, yeah, we're we're almost a penny. Right now. Almost a penny point zero zero nine nine five four. Um, Mike, you, you thought about have you even thought about uh any of the altcoins or any of the Bitcoin stuff? Have not. Nope. Just hodling for now. <laughs> Still have it all. Haven't sold. Yeah. Just holding it, yeah. see what happens. But Checking. now you got me interested with the forks. So now I gotta, you know, move stuff around, make sure I, I get the yeah. get the fork. It's kind of interesting. I've been using um, Coin <laughs> Coin Cap. I think is the name of the app that I use, or it's maybe Altfolio is maybe the name of it. Um, it's Crypto Pro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are moving. I mean, it has really gotten stable. That's like, if I were to say anything, it's gotten boringly stable, which is actually again not a bad thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. When it gets boring, it's actually it's pr- it's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotten, it's, a it's gotten boringly stable. I think some folks are hoping for a move on some things. Um, uh, Saya also updated their client. So it has a new look. If you are if you were doing Saya with us and you still have Saya coin, 1.3.4 is the newest client that is out there. Still doesn't work for me. Um, it keeps, I keep getting the host unreachable. Not that I'm going to host anymore. I'm not going to really host any data anymore, but uh, the wallet's up and running. A little bit of a new look out there. You're going to want to pay attention as we get into this fork um, and as we see what happens there. But some some interesting things coming forward with crypto. I have been waiting for the, um, uh, I have been waiting for uh, some cold weather to come so I can turn my uh, GPUs back on just to have, you know, just again, GPU mining is dead. Like there, at least for now, there's, there's nothing worth it on the GPU side. And, uh, but it's fun. It'll warm up the basement a little bit. Keep me toasty down here uh, in the winter. So I've been messing around with that. um, Nice hash has updated to their beta client to uh, seven. And so if you're, um, if you're following along with us on that, that uh, just updated. Um, Cyber Skull says in the chat room, he says, I feel bad, Jim. I sold nearly 600 terabytes worth of eight terabyte drives last month. Wow. Oh, wow. Nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah, I had, you know, Mike, I sold I had 15. I have six. So I sold nine of them, right? And uh, I'm, I'm I'm glad I kept the six. Like, it's just, it's it's like, hey, a, I'm glad I kept my GPUs. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I wish I would have kept one GPU. <laughs> Yeah, I really do. I don't know why I sold all of them. Should have kept one. I should bring one over to you. <laughs> no, you know? I just I would kind of want one to play around with on like a gaming PC or something. I don't know. Yeah, no, they're they're handy to have. Uh, I'd love the, to throw they, one in my Unraid server for Plex. I've been watching the videos on the RTX series from NVIDIA. That those cards, the new cards, the newest cards that are coming out, and some interesting things there. I don't know if it's worth the price. So I kind of, uh, nah, I went, definitely wouldn't buy those. So um, some good stuff ahead. I think, I don't know. We'll see where we go. This is going to be one of those lulls that I have a feeling everybody will be glad they waited out for those who do. Okay. I do. I do. Yeah, I don't know what that means. 
like I'm not saying it's gonna we're all gonna get rich or it's gonna be worth it from a dollars and cents standpoint. But I think like everything, you know, when you get on the other side of it, it will get really clear. And and um, I think this I think it'll be one of those things that it's been so long and it's been so difficult that I think for those who waited out, there could be some benefits, whatever that means. I don't have no idea what that means. No, I, but, I yeah. You know, it'd be interesting right. to, uh, to, to see where it goes. And um, so it's for now, it's still fun. And that part's still fun. I don't know. It has these spurts where it's, it's really fun for a while. And then you're like, eh. I've been so busy. It's kind of been nice not to worry about it. But I still, uh, you know, I'm still checking every day, right? Like still open that crypto yeah. app. It gives you some to check and it's, yeah, Cyber Skulls said, or Skill Skulls, right? Yeah, says I got just under 600 terabytes left of burst newer drives. Just sold the old ones, the oldest ones. But on the positive side, Unraid got new 12 terabyte drives. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, I just yeah. don't have, I don't have a need for that much data, just to be honest. Man, I I realized, you know, with all my media, I've been cranking, especially now, now with an Unraid server with his with his all the server I have, or sorry, all the storage I have, I've been recording everything on Plex. Mm -hmm. like, whatever I can on TV, just record it. Might as well fill it up. Yeah, one of my one of my fill friends might want to watch it. And what is that? Well. It's that MP MK. What's what MKV MP4? What is it recording those as? That's a great question. Ever since so I upgraded to the HD Home Run, which right. the um, and I have the one that does the transcoding ahead of time. So the, on, yeah. Yeah, on the actual HD home run, mm -hmm. I, got, I should check. I actually haven't looked. It runs so well on Plex that um, I haven't even looked. I got some of Sarah's recordings over to the shield, the NVIDIA shield. I've been trying to, she was having some digital pixelization issues on the audio of the media center. Oh, no. this is your chance, my Jim. You've been talking about this. As I know. I've been waiting for the door to open. Option. I know. I've been waiting for the door to open. So she said, I said, well, hey, let me record it on the shield. And then you can just compare side to side. Tell me what you like. like yeah. So I think we did the voice. That's where it's really key. And I told her it does some pretty dynamite commercial, you know, Removal. takes the commercials out. Yeah. So she hasn't watched them yet. And then I threw some Fallon on there because she's a big Fallon fan. And so, uh, I mean, I'd love to get completely converted over to um, to her being on the shield. There's some weird things still with sound that's not working out that I got to kind of get like, sometimes on live channels, I got to go to the side. There's no sound when I go right to the channel and I got to go and put it to a particular like 720 for the sound to come in. And I, I don't know why. It could be my sound bar. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Possibly. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. Maybe it's looking uh, for surround and I don't have it or something along those lines. Yeah. Because it's almost like the Plex, because usually Plex will pick up and say, hey, that device can't support that audio codec. Let's, so it'll, yeah. it'll, um, it's coming yeah, off the shield. The audio only. Yeah. So like I see mine doing that a lot. So I go and I monitor, especially when my friends are watching. I'll see what, how it's doing the transcoding. And sometimes it'll do direct play on the video, but it'll transcode that audio. So maybe right. it's not picking up what your device is correctly. And so it's uh, sending in a format it can. So that makes sense because once you click it to 720, it's going to transcode it. So yeah. So I got some, I got a little bit of work to do okay. on that. And then of course I was listening to uh, the... Uh, Entertainment 2.0, Rich and Josh. And they said today there was that Amazon has released a DVR. Did you know that? Yes, they have. Yeah. Expensive. But yeah. Well, really? Two two fifty? Is that really that expensive for a DVR that comes with a hard drive and no service fee? Yeah. I mean, no service fee, but you're, again, you're locking yourself into an ecosystem where Plex is just so something like Plex or Windows Media Server is just so open. Yeah. You can run on anything. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, know. but maybe I, we just, I want it, you know, I, I, I want it in the fire environment where everything just works together. See, but then I would just do YouTube TV. Like what's wrong with just YouTube TV works on everything except <laughs> for fire devices. Um, and it has unlimited cloud storage. 
You're probably right. Right? <laughs> but it's 40 it's bucks a month. Uh, well, you're if you want. So you're only going to get over the air on that Amazon, which you could do for free on your Plex server, right? And if you want cable, just do YouTube TV. Yeah. No, I don't know. Right. I, I didn't no. see the. I didn't see the. I haven't seen it either. I just heard. For, I heard it well, on entertainment. It's entertainment. a good idea for people like unlike you and me who don't have a media server. If you have Plex or Windows yeah. Media Server, you don't need it. Oh, no, right you, on. If you don't want to mess with right it, like on. I thought, I saw that. And I literally thought, shoot. And so, I literally just set my parents up with like that Plex server last year. This probably could have replaced that. But uh, yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Uh, just yeah. just a thought. It was just a thought. They hey, are pretty cool, though. If you're listening live, Ryan Tajoski, Cyber Skulls Tajoski. Good to see you, by the way. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you out there. It's the same thing we doing our Unraid show. So, yeah, uh, I, I agree because I've been loving some. We should get Mike Howard on here. Who else? Yeah. Who's our another Unraid guy? Oh, they're, you're, they're, all, all listeners are Unraid. For, I, for some I reason, I've attracted I've been addicted. all of the Unraid people on the planet. There's like 17 of you. And you all listen to this show, and I do not know why. It's like, why, why do you listen to me? I well, I'm getting I'm favor. I'm getting more and more favorable towards it. Guys, we'll be back next week. Dwayne's coming back. Well, we've got uh, we got some openings in November, Mike. Maybe we'll have to maybe around Thanksgiving we'll have to do on raid. Yeah. Okay. Guys, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Mike, hang around for a second.